Braves Country, I'm Mac McGee. Join us for Pitch by Pitch, Play by Play, the classic ball of Braves Country Baseball. We're bringing you Atlanta Braves Baseball all year long. Jump into our pregame show, Braves Country Today, just before first pitch. Stick around for the postgame show, Braves Country Tonight, where we will open up the phone lines and react to your calls or your comments all year long. That's Braves Country Radio, pitch by pitch, play by play, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball.
You're listening to Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Hey, Braves Country, this is Mac McGee with Braves Country Radio. We are bringing you pitch by pitch, play by play of your Atlanta Braves all year long. Please like and subscribe today. It's free, and it helps us bring you more of the game we all love. Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Casey at the Bat by Ernest Lawrence Thayer. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood 4-2, to two, but with one inning more to play. And when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, a Paul-like silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to the hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought, if only Casey could, but get a whack at that, we'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did Jimmy Blake, and the former was a hoodoo, while the latter was a cake. So upon that stricken multitude, grim, melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all, and Blake, the much despised, tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted and men saw what had occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second and Flynn a hugging third. Then from 5,000 throats and more rose a lusty yell, It rumbled through the valley. It rattled in the dell. It pounded on the mountain and recoiled upon the flat. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile lit Casey's face. And when responding to the cheers... He lightly doffed his hat. No stranger in the crowd could doubt t'was Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. Then while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance flashed in Casey's eye, a sneer cooled Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered sphere came hurtling through the air and Casey stood a-watching it in a haughty grandeur there. Closed by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people, there went up a muffled roar like the beating of a storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! shouted someone on the stand, and it's likely they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With the smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult. He bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the dun sphere flew. But Casey ignored it, and the umpire said, Strike two! Fraud! cried the maddened thousands, and echoed answered fraud. But one scornful look from Casey, and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain, and they knew that Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. The sneer is from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now 
he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Well, somewhere in the favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. Casey at the Bat, Ernest Lawrence Thayer, published June 3rd, 1888. San Francisco Examiner. country i'm mac mcgee join us for pitch by pitch play by play the classic ball of braves country baseball we're bringing you atlanta braves baseball all year long jump into our pregame show braves country today just before first pitch stick around for the postgame show braves country tonight where we will open up the phone lines react to your calls or your comments all year long that's braves country radio Pitch by pitch, play by play, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Braves country. Looking forward to a great Atlanta Braves season. See y'all at the ballpark.
Line Up for Braves Country by DM McGee, 2024. A is for Aaron, the hammer and Hank, the real home run king. Take that to the bank. B is for Bobby, Cox never cowered. He'd give Blue quite an earful on his way to the showers. C is for Chipper, don't call him Larry. He would show up in Shea, the Mets he would bury. D is for David, justice he'd bring. A game six solo brought Atlanta their ring. E is for Eddie Matthews, 512 bombs away. Let skies from Boston to Milwaukee to the A. F is for Fred, McGriff dog biting crime. A fire was lit the day he arrived. G is for Glavin. Southpaw winds and kicks, changing speeds east and west, a gem in game six. H is for Harry and his brother, George Wright. The father of baseball, Boston pennants in flight. I is for inning, ending double play. Riley to Ozzy to Olsen all day. J is for Jones. Andrew let her fly, and his gloves in center is where singles would die. K is for strikeouts, a plenty from Strider. The quads in the stash, getting swings from that slider. L is for Lopez, Javi to BMAC, Travis and Smurf, we've been lucky to see that. M is for Mad Dog, he won 355 could swat flies with the changeup and still bust you inside. N is for Necro. He got to the hall by bending and knuckling and floating that ball. O is for Otis. Old Nixon could fly. The catch at the wall baffled our eyes. P still for Peterson. We were all rocking pearls. With Eddie and Jorge, we were out of this world. Q is a quandary for why Dale is not in. Murphy MVPs again and again. R is for ranking. The top pitcher's lore. Remember Kid Nichols, 107 war. S is for Smoltzy. The big three in the hall. When the game's on the line, you give John the ball. T is for Tyler. Matzik and the gift of 2021 the entire night shift you is for chavez but we say uncle jesse the frames the release kept the batters guessing v is van weeren skip carry two don ernie joe the tales from the booth w is warren spawn johnny sane they'd ride him in boston and then pray for rain X is Mazzoni. Yeah, X marked the spot. Leo rocked next to Bobby, and his pitchers stayed hot. Why it makes us feel young. The game's main appeal. Chopping through the battery, there's no better feel. Z is for zip, boom, bam, rama, lama, ding, dong. Throughout the summer, we sing that song. From AJ to eyeglasses and a hell of a pen. Mad Max, Uncle Charlie, win after win. A cannon from short, an RC a later. Acuna Matata, there is no one greater. Though you can't fit them all when you just A to Z. Think of your favorites in the rafters we see. I started with three, then 10, 25, 47, 31, and of course 29. Let's not forget 21, 41, 35, the great 44, or 755, an old number six who led his great teams. The pennants were flying. It felt like a dream. From Boston to Milwaukee to Atlanta's TBS, a family, a tradition, Braves countries the best. Lineup for Braves Country by DM McGee, 2024.
Hey, Braves Country, this is Mac McGee with Braves Country Radio. We are bringing you pitch by pitch, play by play of your Atlanta Braves all year long. Please like and subscribe today. It's free, and it helps us bring you more of the game we all love. Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Braves Country, I'm Mac McGee. Join us for Pitch by Pitch, Play by Play, the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. We're bringing you Atlanta Braves Baseball all year long. Jump into our pregame show, Braves Country Today, just before first pitch. Stick around for the postgame show, Braves Country Tonight, where we will open up the phone lines and react to your calls or your comments all year long. That's Braves Country Radio, pitch by pitch, play by play, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Join the country club today. The first month is free. You'll have access to badges, one-of-a-kind emojis to display your Braves pride throughout the ball game. You'll also get instant access to our video drops. Members only chat, wallpapers, and more is on the way. Help support Braves Country Radio. Join the country club today. Braves country. Good evening, Braves country, and uh, bad news, bad news indeed. The Atlanta Braves have announced today that the our star second baseman, Ozzie Albies, is headed to the IL, and that's why you'll see. I'm going to change the view here in a second, but I wanted you to see what the lineup was going to look like today, and uh, there you have it, uh, Michael Harris. The second will be batting second, and Ozzy Albies is headed to the IL. Now, we're going to take a look at what all this means, and big picture. Big picture, it appears that it's not the end of the world. Big picture, it seems like that we're talking about a minor injury is what we hope. They said it would not require surgery. He's been placed on the 10-day IL, but that doesn't mean he's going to be back in 10 days okay so you you got to understand that just because they put you on the 10 day 10 day il does not mean that you're going to be back in 10 days but what they have done in major league baseball is they have changed the the rules for this year and what you have now is it is a 10 day minimum for everyday players and it is a 15-day minimum for pitchers. And they did that essentially to keep people from or keep teams from manipulating their pitching staff and sending teams back and forth, back and forth. Because if you remember a few years back, they had it at 10 for everybody, and then they and then they went back to 15. Well, now it's 10 and 15, depending on your position. Um, so 
just because Ozzy Albies is on the 10 day, 10 day, 10 day IL don't misconstrue that and think that he's going to be back in 10 days. It's a fractured bone in his foot, unfortunately. And you're pro I, I don't want to guesstimate, but I definitely think it's going to be longer than 10 days. Um, I don't think it's going to be something that we're going to see, see him on the IL for like the rest of the season, but I don't think he's going to be, but 10 days would, would put him back essentially at the end of April. I don't think we see him in April. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope he heals really quickly, but it, if you missed the game last night, uh, it all comes from that hit by pitch on his foot. And you remember he was limping around Now he ended up having three more at bats. But once the adrenaline wore off, he got an MRI. And once he got the MRI, the the gig was up. And what does this mean short term for the Braves? Well, they have selected the contract of David Fletcher. And if you remember, David Fletcher was one of the deals that they made in the offseason. Looked like a minor deal at the time, but he was a veteran infielder that was added to the roster in the moment they got him from LA. It was a part of a bunch of deals that, that the Braves did. I don't know how many people remember this, but we immediately put him through waivers and they did this because they wanted Fletcher to get every day at bats until he's needed. They didn't want him sitting on the bench. Like you have Luis Guillorme. So what that tells me is that we'll probably get a bit of a platoon, but I do believe that David Fletcher is going to get the majority of the work because Guillaume is a guy that's really there. He's really on the team for a couple of things. One of the main things that he's there for is that he can play a number of positions, but he's also a left-handed bat off the bench, et cetera, et cetera. But he's well past what, what prime he had. He, for people who aren't familiar with Luis Guillorme and his career, he was never a star. He was never anything like that. But he is not a guy that, that you look at as an everyday player. He was with the Mets the past few years, and now he's with Atlanta. David Fletcher was a guy that at one point in, in the height of his career, I wouldn't call him a star, but he was definitely an everyday starter. He 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 was a uh he he had a couple of years where where he uh, flirted with um, all-star games and, and stuff like that. So he's realistically a much better player than I think a lot of people give. And if you remember in the spring, if you followed us during the spring, he had a pretty good spring. So we'll see how he contributes. He won't be starting tonight because he got the news late. The Braves got the news late. So they had to get get him to, to uh, Houston. So you may see him. Uh, tomorrow night, I haven't gotten uh, official word if he's in the Braves clubhouse yet. You, there's a possibility that you could see him. I I would think that they've probably gotten him there by now, but th there's a possibility that you could see him pinch hit tonight. But Guillaume is getting the start just because of the hecticness of all this. So that's what we're looking at. And what that means in the immediate future for the Braves lineup is the fact that you're you're talking about um Michael Harris the second is going to be the number two hitter going forward. And I think that'll be pretty routine. When they face a left hander, they might juggle that a little bit, but I I think he's gonna do a fine job. I think Kelnick will do a fine job of sliding in to essentially Michael's role versus right-handers they're going to have him tonight he's at the number seven spot we'll see if that's where he stays but on a typical night where you have all your starters in and let's say you got Fletcher in and let's say you have Travis Darnold in I would say Fletcher's probably going to go to the nine spot I would say that Guillaume versus right-handers may be in the eight spot may you you may see him in the nine spot the, the only thing that you hate about this thing as far as like the in-game strategy is that when you don't have Kelnick batting ninth, you kind of clog up the bases because if whoever gets on in front of Acuna, you don't want them to be a statue. 
And that's essentially what, what Chadwick Trump is. That's essentially what Guillaume is. So you lose a lot of speed. You lose a lot of athletic ability. But when David Fletcher joins the team, he's very athletic infielder. So it's so the sky's not falling. But obviously, he's not going to be Ozzy Albies. He's not going to be a guy who's going to flirt with 30 home runs and 100 RBI every year. He's a guy that can get, get one out every once in a while. But you're talking about in 162 game season in his prime, he was about a 12 to 15 home run guy. He was a guy that hit in the high 200s, usually around the 270, 275, 280 mark. And he's a guy that is a good base runner. He's a good glove man, but he's not the offensive weapon that Ozzy is. To me, the best case scenario for Ozzy would be back, be back sometime in early to mid-May. And if we can get him back, unfortunately, Ozzy's got some bad luck. I mean, Injured once again, this is three years in a row where he's going to miss significant time. And hopefully it's not as long of a stint as, as we've seen before, but you can imagine, you know, you're, you're starting to get geared up for the season. You're getting your bat a little hot. And then all of a sudden this happens and it's almost like you go back to square one. But, um, I would see was John, John saying, uh, yeah, the, well, I wouldn't pay attention to the Twitter doctors. Uh, from from my understanding, the the best case scenario out of this would be about three weeks, maybe four. The worst case scenario would be a month or more. But the swelling hasn't even gone down. They're, they they haven't even gotten into what, and, and not to mention the fact we're not even talking about so some of these people that are out there making guesses, it depends on where the fracture is, but also think about this. They get him back. He's probably gonna have to go out on a rehab assignment just to get his bat warm. So that could be an, another week added to it. But thankfully we've got some depth. We've got some depth. And for people who are probably sitting around going, we should, we should have never traded, <laughs> uh, Vaughn Grissom, he's on the I.L. right now for the Boston Red Sox. So there you have that. Um, the, the big picture of this, the Braves pitching is going to have to be better. They can't expect the Atlanta Braves to go out and score seven, eight, nine, six runs every single night. The starting pitching has to be better. I do think we're going to get a good start out of Ronaldo Lopez. But I'm not talking about just one night. I'm talking about the starting pitcher for the Atlanta Braves has got to go out there and give you a quality start, meaning five to six innings, three earned runs or less. When you do that, even with the injury, this offense is going to give you a chance to win every single night. And this bullpen is pretty darn good as well. I know they've had some hiccups, but you keep running uh, relievers out there every day. They're eventually going to have a bad game they're going to get worn down and that that comes back to right now the Atlanta Braves starting pitching has got to refocus and get back to giving and I I got full uh confidence that they will but it becomes imperative now when you don't have Strider when you don't have Ozzy that the other guys next man up mentality the other guys are going to have to come in and actually make their mark every single night and not expect Marcelo Zuna to slam a three run home run to get you out of the mess. Hitting a baseball is extremely hard. If it wasn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't send people to the hall of fame for being what if you, if you, uh, if you're out seven out of 10 times, you go to the hall of fame. So the point being, you cannot expect the Atlanta Braves to go out and score six, seven, eight runs a night. They can do it at any time, but the pitching has got to be better. The starting pitching has got to be better. It's got to start tonight. It's got to continue tomorrow with Max Freed. We saw him with a good start on Friday. Well, he's, he, he's got to do better than that because he's got to go out tomorrow and show us again and again and again. What you want from a Max Freed is it one start out of every eight or nine is a hiccup not one start out of every three is a good one 
So that's what we're looking at. Ronaldo Lopez has been very good. We'll get more into that here uh, as the game begins. And uh, we got a lot of things going on. Need to go ahead and get you started with the, the lineups and all that stuff. Keep it locked in here. Braves, Astros, game number two. Two of our big stars already down in this early season. Spencer Strider out for the year. If you're just joining us, the news came through today. Ozzy Albies on the 10-day IL with the foot. All right, we will be back in a flash. Keep it locked in. Like me, you can't smoke like me. So don't try and be like me. Let's party together. <laughs> There's something, I'll say there's something kind of yeah about a kid that's never played baseball. Baseball is a beautiful thing. It's more beautiful than an old park. It's asymmetrical and quirky. But even in a dome with artificial turf, it's beautiful. The way the field fans out, the choreography of the sport, the pace and rhythm of it, the fact that that pace and rhythm allows for conversation and reflection and opinion and comparison. In right field, the crowd is tormenting strawberries, singing Daryl, Daryl. Little roller up along first, behind the bag! It gets through Buckner! Here comes Knight in the mix with And there's a fly ball deep to left! It's on its way! There it goes! And the Yankees are going to the World Series! Aaron Boone! Ground ball stabbed by Folk, he has it. He underhands to first! For the first time in 86 years, the Red Sox have won baseball world championship. Can you believe it? It's a pastime, something you do. It's entertainment, something you watch. And it's a shared experience, something you, you talk about and read about. But you can apply those same three criteria to other things. What makes baseball special is that it's the best game that's ever been devised. Smith corks one in the right down the line. It may go. Go crazy, folks. Go crazy. Sure as God may green apples, someday the Chicago Cubs are going to be in the World Series. A little bouncer slowly toward Bryant. He will glove it in front of Rizzo. It's in time. And the Chicago Cubs win the World Series. Cubs win. What a lucky break. The good Lord wants the Cubs to win. How can you not be romantic about baseball? If baseball is about caring, about loyalty and rivalry. Braves fans are on their feet hoping for some kind of a bleeder or a seeing eye single. Here's the one two pitch. Fastball hit high and deep down the right field line. It's going back, back, back. Is it fair? Is it zip, boom, bam, it's gone. Ramble, lamb, and ding, gone by three run shot. And your Atlanta Braves have taken a one run lead. It is a very peaceful thing. It was created and played in pastures and meadows. There's grass, there's outdoors, there's everything that people thought was American and feel about America. You get in a ballpark and it's the wonder of walking through that dark tunnel and seeing a huge open space where men play the little boys game. I believe in the Church of Baseball. I've tried all the major religions and most of the minor ones. I know things. For instance, there are 108 beads in a Catholic rosary and there are 108 stitches in a baseball. I prefer metaphysics to theology. You see, there's no guilt in baseball and it's never boring. It's a long season and you gotta trust it. I've tried them all I really have and the only church that truly feeds the soul day in, day out is the Church of Baseball. If there's a bigger thing going on right now, I don't know what it is. We're down to one strike here. Guriel, the last hope for the Houston Astros. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swung on. Bounced over to Dansby. Dansby fires it over to first. 
And here comes the dog pile. Fire the cannons in the battery. Do the chop all throughout Braves country. Pop that top. Your Atlanta Braves have won it all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose what stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the girls and boys and join us for Braves Country Baseball. You're listening live and the scene is Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas, where we're set to bring you pitch by pitch, play by play of your Atlanta Braves. Hi, I'm Mac McGee. Here are your starting lineups for today's action. Leading off and playing right field for your Atlanta Braves, it's Ronald Acuna Jr. Five RBI, seven stolen bases, batting 288. Batting second and patrolling center field for your Atlanta Braves. It's Michael Harris the second. Harris has two home runs, eight RBI, one stolen base, batting 290. Batting third, playing third. Austin Riley, two home runs, 12 RBI, batting 292. Matt Olson, three home runs. 11 RBI, batting 286, and batting cleanup. Marcelo Zuna is your designated hitter. Seven home runs, 22 RBI, batting 365. Orlando Arcia playing short and comes in batting 352 with four RBI. Jared Kelnick playing left field, batting seventh, three RBI, 387. Playing second base and batting eighth, it's Luis Guillorme. He's one for three on the year. Chadwick Trump is two for 13 and batting ninth. He's behind home plate for your Atlanta Braves with three RBI and a 154 average. On the mound for your Atlanta Braves tonight, it's Ronaldo Lopez. He comes in with a .75 ERA and a shiny 1.00 whip. 12 innings pitched, seven hits allowed, 11 strikeouts, five walks, no home runs given up. He'll be going head to head with Hunter Brown. Hunter Brown is 0-2 on the young season, seven and two thirds innings pitched, a 16.43 ERA and a 3.91 whip. He's allowed 23 hits, eight strikeouts, seven walks, two home runs in seven and two thirds. Backing up Hunter at the bottom of the first inning, leading off and playing second base for the Houston Astros, it's Jose Altuve. Jose has five home runs, seven RBI, one stolen base, batting 403. Jordan Alvarez, the designated hitter, four home runs, 12 RBI, batting 299. Kyle Tucker, four home runs, 13 RBI, two stolen bases, batting 257 and playing right field. Alex Bregman is batting cleanup and playing third with three RBI, one stolen base, batting 259. Yanni Diaz is behind the plate with three home runs, eight RBI, batting 288. Jeremy Pena playing short, 
with two home runs, eight RBI, two stolen bases, betting 343. Singleton is playing first tonight. He is 7 of 28 on the young season. Chaz McCormick is in left field with five RBI, one stolen base, betting 229. And Myers will be patrolling center field with two home runs, seven RBI, betting 229. Calling balls and strikes behind home plate tonight, it'll be Alex Tossi, first base umpire, Dan Bellino. Second base will be manned by Phil Cousy, and down the third base line, it's Tony Rondazzo. Lena comes in 10 and 5, 6 and 3 on the road. Astros are 6 and 12, 4 and 7 at home. Lena Braves are minus 115 on the money line. The over under is 9.5. Well, it's about that time. Grab you a cold one, find you an armchair. It's Braves Astros game two of a three game series. Your Atlanta Braves have a chance to win the series tonight with a possible sweep tomorrow. Get those chop arms ready. Come on country club, get your game face on. Let's go Braves country. Good evening, Country Club. Good evening, Braves Country. Atlanta Braves are set for pitch by pitch, play by play. Houston Astros, and we're just moments away from Ronaldo Lopez versus Hunter Brown. If you remember Hunter Brown when he first began his career, he was one of the top prospects in all of baseball. But the last year or so, he's really come down to earth and. Though he though he can bring it, he throws mid nineties fastballs. He it's from my understanding, what I have read about him is that he has just not been locating. He's been falling behind, and that's why you're walking in here seeing a sixteen point two three ERA. So he's got the stuff. We just hope he doesn't find it tonight with the Atlanta Braves coming in here, getting game one of the three game series last night, six to one. We got tonight, and remember, it's a quick turnaround. Tomorrow, it is a 2:10 first pitch. We'll come on the air about 1:30. And for those of y'all who might be joining us late, Ozzy Albies is on the injured list. He is heading to the injured list with a fracture in his foot. They hope it's not a long-term stent, and they do not believe it's going to require surgery. So that's the good news. The bad news is we're missing Ozzy Albies in his bat. So. Hunter Brown and the Astros are doing their final warm-up tosses. They're wearing their white shirt, white pants, top to bottom. Lettering in dark navy outlined with orange. Across the chest is Astros. Dark blue hat with the H in front of the star as their signature logo. And we're just about set for... First pitch as the Braves are in their classic home uh, road grays, excuse me, land across the chest, tomahawk underneath. Atlanta in red, tomahawk in red, numerals in red, lettering, on, or excuse me, numerals in red and lettering on the back is in Navy. And Ronald Acuna Jr. is stepping into the batter's box hunter brown throwing his final warm-up pitches wherever you're at we'd love to hear where you're listening from here in braves country and we'll do roll call here in the bottom of the first inning but until then hunter brown comes set acuna digs in and yes sir it is baseball time in braves country brown kicks and fire swing and that ball's Fouled, sawed off 97 miles an hour in on the hands. It's 0 1. Braves nothing, Astros nothing. Top of the first inning, just getting going. The 0 1 pitch swung on, broken bat. That's going to get down for a base hit, and you're Atlanta Braves. 
has one on, nobody out. And Michael Harris, the second, coming to the plate. Ronald Acuna Jr. is on first. They'll retrieve that broken bat. Busted off in his hand. But Acuna was heading down the first for this guy listening on radio. He, all he had was the handle left. The rest of it shattered into about three pieces. Braves nothing. Astros nothing. Top of the first. One on, nobody out. The first pitch on the way to Michael Harris, the second, is right down the pipe, 95 miles an hour for a strike. It's on one. The 0 1. Rocks and fires. 94 mile an hour fastball right down the pipe. 0 and 2. So an 0 2 count. Harris batting second with Ozzy Albies on the IL. The 0 2 pitch swing and a miss, strike three. And Ronald Cunha Jr. is going to take off. He will be head first slide. Got himself another stolen base. It was a swing and a miss strike. The throw wasn't a bad throw. It was a one hopper that came in and out of the glove of the shortstop. Pena, he was trying to apply the tag. And Acuna, if Pena holds on to the ball, it's probably an out. First pitch on the way to Austin Riley is inside. And Acuna takes off again, and he steals third, baby. How about that? He, Ronald Acuna Jr. takes off with a great jump. Diaz is looking around like, man, I need a little help. I'm going to need you to look look back the runner. So just like that, Acuna, runner on, that's a close play. They may take a, take a look at that. Acuna is really close to possibly getting hit there. They are going to challenge it, it looks like. It's extremely close. The tag, oh, yeah, I, th I think they're going to get him. Looking at that a second look, Ronald Acuna Jr. head first slide. And they just got him on the on the front of the arm. Unless, there's, unless they're going to say that, that there's not enough to overturn it, I don't think they're going to. Yep, he is out, and he is uh Got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. You didn't see it at first because of the angle of the camera. But when you get that second angle coming in between home and first, they got him on the arm just before. He's probably safe if he does a swim move and tags the bag with his right arm. But they got him on the left arm, and now there's two away. So two down. Pitch on the way. The 1 0 pitch to Austin Riley's inside. So a 2 0 count to Riley. You hate taking the runner in scoring position out when Riley's at the plate, but that's what you get with Acuna. You got to let him run. The 2 0 pitch swung on, popped up high in the sky. Easy play. Kyle Tucker will make the catch, and that'll end the inning. Braves put one on, but fail to score. We'll be back in a flash here on Braves Country. Someone calls you fat. Just ignore them. You're bigger than that. Hey, Braves Country. I'm Mac McGee. Join us for Pitch by Pitch, Play by Play, the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. We're bringing you Atlanta Braves baseball all year long. Jump into our pregame show, Braves Country Today, just before first pitch. Stick around for the postgame show, Braves Country Tonight, where we will open up the phone lines and react to your calls or your comments all year long. That's Braves Country Radio, pitch by pitch, play by play, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Your favorite shot? 
favorite shot, uh, I, I don't know. I had it last night, uh, lots of them. I think it's called the Picklehead, where it's a shot of Jameson with a little bit of pickle juice chaser. And it's the most uh, wonderful and terrible thing I've ever had in, in my drinking life. <laughs> because <laughs> once, you take the, once you take the shot and then you take the pickle juice, there's no burn. There's absolutely no burn, right? And then you're like, well, shoot, yeah, it's just Kool-Aid at that point. <laughs> it can lead to very bad things. <laughs> Trust me. Armchair. It is ridiculous to pay ball players $2,000 a year, especially when the $800 boys often do just as well. William A. Hulbert, a ruthless coal magnate who owned the Chicago White Stockings, became the National League's president. He immediately took steps to revive the reputation of the professional game. Players were forbidden to drink on the field or off. No beer was to be served on the grounds, and no games were to be played on Sunday. Power was to be invested in the owners, not the players. You're listening to Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. <laughs> Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. Ronaldo Lopez stands in, and it's about that time for roll call. Get this bus moving. Stop. Come back. Too late. Mm. No call. Yeah, yeah. No call. You're in Braves country. First pitch on the way from Lopez is right there for a strike to Jose Altuve. It's 0 and 1. Good, e- good evening to Cal L. Willis. The 0 1 pitch. Down and away, one and one. Country club member Robert. Good evening to Copper Cat, John, Jesse. Country club member D. Good evening to Pushing Buttons as the one one pitch swung on, grounded towards short. RC has got a charge. He'll fire it over to first. It's a 6 3 put out, one away. Good evening to M3, Gary, Russell, Jason, Tree. Good evening to Raymond, country club member, second month. Thank you, Raymond. The the first pitch on the way to Alvarez is swung on and missed at the top of the zone. It's 0-1. Good evening to Norman, Brandon, the 0-1 pitch, high and outside, 1-1. Norman listening to us from Dothan, Alabama. Robert from Atlanta, Georgia, country club member Robert. Good seeing you, the 1-1 pitch. Swing, and that ball's hit high and deep. Back behind home plate, smacks against the screen and drops down for a Good evening to Gary, David, country club member, Hussein, Edward, is the one-two pitch. Caught, looking, strike three. Frozen with that slider on the outer edge, two away. Get that stat tracker back up. Thank you. Who was it? That uh, Raymond? Thing bounces on us at the beginning. Good evening, Dolo, Jesse, and Brandon. The first pitch on the way to Tucker is outside wide for a ball. It's 1 0. So a 1 0 count. Righty, lefty, Lopez. Just misses outside, 93 miles an hour, 2-0. You would have loved to have that call, but it did look like it missed it. Appreciate the kind words, Tree. So a 2-0 count, righty-lefty, Braves nothing, Astros nothing. The 2-0, that one's nowhere near the zone, 3-0. So now you got a 3-0 count, and the question is, do you lay one in there or do you pitch around him and take your chance with the right-hander Bregman, who's off to a slow start for Alex Bregman's standards, but we talked about this last night. He's He was off to a slow start last year. He eventually got really hot, the 3-0 pitch. 
95 misses. Just tried to paint that outer edge. Missed his spot, and he'll walk the batter with two outs and Bregman coming to the plate. The challenge was, uh, Brandon, if you're asking about the, the challenge from last inning, the Ron Cooney Jr. was called safe at third, and he was, uh, it was challenged, and he was called out trying to steal. First pitch to Bregman is down and away for a ball. It's 1-0. Oh. The 1-0, oh, righty, righty. Ray Lowe comes, set the pitch, swing, and that ball's belted towards left field. Is it fair? If it's fair, it's trouble. Just foul. That thing smacked up against their version of a green monster. Just below the 315 mark. That was a bullet. We need to get out of Houston before Bregman heats up. He's He is a problem when he gets hot. So a 1-1 one, one count, one on, two outs. Once again, Ozzie Albies sent to the 10-day IL with a slight fracture in his foot. So it's Guillaume starting tonight as the 1-1. One, one. Misses high, 2-1, 96 miles an hour. Guillaume is getting the start tonight. David Fletcher has being added to the 26-man roster coming up from Gwinnett. He can play all over the infield. The 2-1 pitch. Swing, and that ball's lifted high into right field. Ronald Acuna Jr., he'll make the fair catch at about the 50-yard line, and we'll head to the top of the second. Olsen, Ozuna, Arcia, the heart of the order coming to the plate. Albert Goodwill Spaulding. With $800 borrowed from his mother, he opened a sporting goods business. Soon, he was manufacturing all the baseballs used in the National League. He then began making bats and uniforms, managing to persuade club owners that each position should have its own distinctive garb. The result was chaos. The team looked like a Dutch bed of tulips, a Chicago sports writer said, and the experiment was quickly abandoned. I just want to let you know that I don't like you spending too much time with people who have nice, normal wives, okay? I don't need you getting any ideas. Do you understand? And Pascual Perez just threw a baseball into the Cubs dugout, and another one came flying right back out. And there's another one, and it's hit one of the umpires out of the mound. Now Don Zimmer's coming up, and he'll argue that Perez started it. He threw a ball into the dugout, and he did. Harry Wendelstadt and Zimmer. You see Zimmer's hot. Pascual was being tended to on the mound. It appeared that his right hand, his pitching hand, may have been hit by that line drive. So now Ron McLean is up talking to him. The huddle is around him. Somebody must have said something from the Cup dugout, and Pascal just lobbed a baseball into the dugout, and in short order, it came flying right back out. And when the ball came out, it hit home plate umpire Bill Hahn. One of the Cubs is going to be fined for throwing the ball. It's going to be fine because that guy's pitcher threw the ball in our dugout. A little bit of a smile on Pascal's face as if he's gotten away with something here. Armchair. Gas prices are so high that I just saw Dolly Parton carpooling with Jolene. <laughs> Ebbett Spence. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. Your Atlanta Braves zero, Houston Astros zero. If you're just joining us, Ronald Cunha Jr. got on with the single, stole second, and then was called out after the challenge trying to steal third. That's what you missed in the first. First pitch on the way to Matt Olson is high. Looked like it grabbed the top of the zone, but he got the call in his favor. It's 1-0. The 1-0 pitch, righty, lefty, Brown turns and fires in the dirt. 
one and oh or two and excuse me i was listening to a couple of so i mean i, I guess the the hot trending topic this week as it has been quite a bit is the umpire the 2-0 pitch misses well out of the zone 3-0 so a 3-0 count to Olsen nobody on righty lefty the pitch well out of the zone ball four so your Atlanta Braves one on nobody out Righty righty matchup. The first pitch to Ozuna is down and away for a ball. It's one and zero. Oh. So that's five consecutive balls to start the second. And we talked about this in the pregame show. Hunter Brown's biggest Achilles seal this year has been hitting the zone. The one zero oh pitch down and away two and zero. Oh. I haven't watched enough of his starts i i tried to hit some highlights on it but i haven't watched enough of his starts all the way through to know if he's nibbling and afraid of getting you know lit up or if it's just honestly a an issue of location the 2-0 pitch just grabs the outer edge slider kisses the black it's two and one But back to what I was talking about the the uh, the big trending topic is Angel Hernandez the two one down below the zone. Whoa, that was called a strike. That was a bad call, terrible call by Alex Tossi. Now he gave one to Olson, but man, oh man, alive, that missed the zone by about two two inches or so, down and away. So a two two count. Seems like Ozuna gets the bad calls all the time. The two two. Swung on, grounded over to short. It's going to be a 6-4-3 double play. That bad call by home plate umpire Alex Tossi definitely had a hand in that double play. Ozuna's not swinging at that with one strike, and he he's giving a, a look and shaking his head to Tossi as he's rounding, bound, rounding behind him, heading towards back, back towards the dugout. And I can't blame him. I mean, that is a terrible call, and it makes the such a big difference between a 3-1 count and a 2-2 pitch. So Orlando Arcia comes to the play. He's batting 352. He takes a hack at the first pitch. 96 miles an hour, swinging a miss right down Main Street. It's 0-1. The 0 1 kicks and fires, misses high, 1 and 1. Braves nothing, Strohs nothing, top of the second inning. The 1 1 to RC, a swing and fists that foul down the right field line. It'll bend into the seats. Gave it a bit of a ride, but it was plenty foul, 1 and 2. Lando Arcia batting 352 on the young year. Hunter Brown digs in the one two pitch. He's gone four seam on all three pitches so far. On the way in the dirt, bounces away. That's one of those ones you like to. If you hindsight's twenty twenty, if you could swing at that pitch and take off running, RC is standing on first. But instead, you got a two two count. They showed up a stat there. Orlando RC is batting four oh six in away games with a ten thirty five OPS. The two two offering swing and pops it back foul. Ninety six in on the hands. We'll do it again. Hunter Brown does not lack. Velocity, that's for sure. 
And two years ago, he came up late in the season and was being looked upon as the next young star. As the 2-2 pitch swung on, fouled straight back. So a 2-2 count. What ended up happening last year is he had a so-so year. It wasn't a great year, but it wasn't a terrible year. But he it's not what they thought they were they were getting. And they hope was that it was more of the sophomore jinx type of stuff, and he'd bounce back this year. But so far, the 2-2 in the dirt. Good take, 3-2. and two. So far this year, we're coming in with a 16 ERA. That obviously hasn't been the case. We just hope we see him and get, get to him before he figures it all out this year. Jared Kelnick stands on deck with two outs. Infield back, the 3-2. Swing, and that ball's lifted high and deep, going back on the track. Zip, boom, bam, it's gone. ram a lam -a ding dong Orlando Arcia, his first home run of the season. Fifth RBI, 371 happy feet. 98 miles an hour off the bat. Atlanta Braves are taking a one-run lead. I had to pause for a second because the ball goes about the deepest part of the park. And it hit the railing. Just, if he goes just a little to the right, I think McCormick probably catches it. It would have been a difficult catch from his vantage point, but I think he probably catches it. Instead, it just goes a tad to the left, and it's a home run. Now, it looks like that they want to possibly take a look at this. I think they want to see if there's fan interference. Maybe... Jeffrey Mayer sitting up there, up there in the uh, the balcony. I'd have to see a, a much closer look because the views that we've gotten did not get anything definitive. So they are taking a look at it. The big thing is, is there going to be enough to overtake, overturn it? I don't see anything there. It looked like it went to the, yeah, it hit the, in fact, the fan who's wearing an Astro uniform, by the way, is pointing to the fact that it smacked the railing, which is what I thought it did. It smacked the railing. That's going to be a home run. That's definitely a home run. They, I don't know why it's taken them so long to figure it out. For folks who aren't familiar with it, it goes to New York, but they've got a, and it, and it has been a, called a home run. And just for that, we'll hit it one more time. Garcia's jumping out the once again. I guess that's the best news of it. He gets to celebrate on the first time. Orlando RC. Yeah, yeah, it's a home run later. That'll bring Jared Kelvin to the plate. He takes a swing at the first pitch and solves it off. Foul down the line. Braves one. Strohs nothing. Top of the second. The 0 1 pitch in the dirt. 1 and 1. In fact, looking at uh, taking a second look at it, the fan, there wasn't even a fan really making an honest attempt for it. I think that Astro fan that was sitting up there at the top is like, don't drag me, man. Don't get me on the internet <laughs> saying I caused a home run. The 1-1 one, one swung on and fouled back out of play. It's 1-2. and two. He doesn't want to be the Houston Bartman overnight so a one two count righty lefty pitch to counting high and inside two and two the 
two two pitch down and in three and two so a full count Hunter Brown comes set his 31st pitch of the night the offering swing and a miss strike three just over the top pulled the string on that one and that'll end the inning but up for your Atlanta Braves take a one nothing lead via Orlando Arcia's first home run of the year I just remember like in 1998 when the internet blew up and everyone was all freaked out about it and they were like keep your information off the internet and we were like yeah for sure <laughs> and like now a stranger can literally just pull up to us in an alley and roll down the window, say our name, and we're like, oh, thank God. Can you take me to where I live? <laughs> Pete Schneider was a pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds from 1914 to 1918. On May 23rd, 1923, he had one of the greatest nights a baseball player can have. In that game, he was the starting right fielder for Vernon of the Pacific Coast League at Salt Lake City. In his first at bat in the first inning, he hit a two-run home run. Vernon batted around in the third, and once again, he would come up to the plate, this time with the bases loaded. With one swing, he unloaded them with a grand slam. In just three innings, he had two home runs and six RBIs. In the fourth inning, he again hit a home run, this time a three-run home run. His next at bat came in the sixth. He just missed another home run when he hit a double off the very top of the center field wall. In the seventh inning, he hit his fourth home run and second grand slam of the game, raising his home run total to four and his RBI total to 13. Vernon would bat around again, and Schneider would come to the plate again in the seventh, this time with the bases empty. He hit another home run. His last at bat came in the ninth. His last at bat resulted in a fly out to center field. He ended the game with five home runs and 14 RBIs. What a performance. Oh, yeah, and his team ended up winning the game 35-11. to 11. Rosting was basically a guy who never gambled. You know, he's known as a gambler, and he never gambled on anything in his life, which is why he got very, very wealthy. He only put money ostensibly gambling on things that he knew were a sure thing or that he had covered so well that there was no way that he couldn't make a profit. I don't think he really cared about sports. I think he really did cynically feel like, well, these guys are schmucks. They're going to be old men, and I'm still going to be making money off this game when they just have to pay to get into the stadium. <laughs> Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. Atlanta Braves lead this 1-1-0. One, one, Ronaldo Lopez will go back to work. Righty, righty matchup. Diaz, the hind catcher, comes to the plate batting 288. Ray Lowe comes set. Kicks and fires. Slider well off the plate wide. It's one to know. You'll notice Ronaldo Lopez very rarely works from the stretch. He usually comes from the set position. That's because the last few years he's been a reliever, and he just said that he feels more comfortable with it. He'll mix it up every once in a while, but he's typically coming from the set position. The 1 0 from Lopez. Fastball right there on the outer edge just misses. 95 miles an hour, 2-0. So a 2-0 count. The pitch from Raylo right down the pipe, 95. Kisses the black on the outer edge, 2-1. Braves won, Strohs nothing. Game two of a three-game set. Game three will be tomorrow, 2-10 first pitch. We'll come on the air. About 1.30 for the pregame show. The 2-1 pitch swung on, grounded, foul down the line, 2-2. Two and two. It'll be Max Freed Day. They, If you missed that news earlier in the week, he got bumped up from Friday to tomorrow, resetting the rotation after Vines pitched on Monday. Pitch on the way is swing and a miss, two and two. So a two-two count. Lopez comes set, 21st pitch of the night. Grounded over towards short. Arcia fires it across the infield like a cannon going off. It's a 6-3 put out, one away. 
No, I've mentioned it before. That's one of my. That's, it's become one of my new favorite things to watch in all of baseball, and that is Orlando Arcia. Just your routine play going from short to first. So that'll bring Jeremy Pena to the plate. Pena, the Houston shortstop, takes the first pitch out wide for a ball. One and zero. He's off to a hot start in eight thirty six OPS, three forty three on the year with two bombs, eight ribbies. The one zero, just below the knees. Two and zero. Tried to get him to chase that one. Standing on deck is Singleton. the pitch swing and a miss 96 right in his wheelhouse two and one the two one pitch swung on fisted towards center field dropping dropping almost making a sliding catch as Acuna the ball ricochets off Acuna's Glove, possibly his leg as well, and it goes all the way to left field. Kelnick, uh, this is not good. Acuna's limping, and he's limping bad. He is limping bad. I think the ball might have hit him in the knee. He is limping bad. He's trying to walk it off. Trying to see the slowed down replay of it. Yeah, he hit him in the right knee as he was trying to make the sliding catch. I think it got him right on the knee. Can ill afford to lose him as well. They're obviously going to come out there and talk to him. He's trying to walk it off. And I know he doesn't want to come out. And he is limping bad. Braves training staff is out there talking to him. Guillaume is close by as well. He is limping bad. Situation where you wish you could. You wish the rules were a little different. If you wanted to stay in, you could sl slide him over to DH. But if he has to come out, he has to come out. They're talking to Snicker, and I did just the way they normally do it. Acuna says he's okay. He's shaking everybody off, but you just wonder. We thought Ozzy was okay last night. And then he got the MRI, so you know that's happening tonight. Hopefully it's just going to be a bruise. He gets a bit of a round of applause from the Houston fans. Class move by the, the Astro fans. And there are quite a bit of Braves fans in the audience as well. And he is limping. I mean, he is just gingerly doing a circle in right field, but... He says he's okay. It just, I mean, that ball, he, he was sliding for it. And just the worst possible thing that happened, it hit him right on the inner part of the right knee in ricocheted. And you know it hit him flush because it bounced several feet away all the way into left field to where Kelnick didn't even have to chase it. So we'll hope for the best, and we go back to work. The first pitch on the way is swung on, grounded over to Arcia. He turns like he's going to go to third, but flips it over to first. 6-3 put out, two away. I know Acuna less, and he's still limping. I, I just saw a, a different angle off, off of one of the away monitors, and he is still limping. Now they're showing him again on the Atlanta cast, and hopefully he can rub some dirt on it and be okay. But first pitch on the way from McCormick to McCormick from Ronaldo Lopez is a slider up in the zone called for a strike. It's on one. Chaz McCormick, he was the left fielder that was drifting back trying to make that catch on the RCA home run. The 0 1 down and away, 1 and 1. The one one from Raylo. Swing and a miss. Slider down the way one and two. 
mean, these injuries are just piling up and hopefully Acuna will be okay. My guess is going to be, even if he is okay, we probably won't see him tomorrow in the lineup with it being a day game, just given the afternoon off the one, two pitch swing and a miss strike three. One thing's for sure. Ronaldo Lopez is dealing. Acuna looks a little better. He's jogging back to the dugout y'all. So let's hope for the best here in Braves country. Time to wake up the neighborhood. <laughs> rooster when you have a pot. Hey, rookie! You were good. For those of you who have seen Field of Dreams, and for those of you who haven't, I'm going to tell you the story of Moonlight Graham. Archibald Wright Moonlight Graham was born on November 12, 1876 in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Some say he got his nickname because of his speed. Others say he got his nickname because he moonlighted at a second job in the offseason. He played minor league baseball for six seasons until he finally got his chance in the big leagues with the New York Giants in 1905. On June 29th, he would finally make it into a game against Brooklyn at Washington Park. Graham would replace right fielder George Brown at the end of the eighth inning. Unfortunately for Graham, he never got a chance to bat. In the top of the ninth, he would be left in the on-deck circle when Claude Elliott flied out for the third out of the inning. He would play right field in the bottom half of the inning, but never recorded a put out or an assist. Soon after, he returned to the minors where he played until 1908. In 1908, he had to retire due to chronic respiratory problems. He never got another chance to play in the big leagues. In 1911, an American League scout found out he was playing semi-pro ball and asked him to join the Red Sox, but he declined the offer. After baseball, he became the Chisholm School Doctor in Minnesota for over 50 years. Sometimes he would take the students out to the field, where he would throw baseballs from home plate over the left field wall a distance of 335 feet. In 1965, passed away at the age of 88. Baseball sports are the streets and the lots in the old neighborhoods. We had to build the backstop. We had to build the mound. We had to put down the line. Actually, we had an, uh, a saint of a man by the name of Joe Austin, a night manager in a brewery who was single, who had played semi-pro ball, and who was the godfather of baseball for this community. And he built the field, uh, the players helping him. And we played there on weekends, had a very, very good team, even got uniforms after a while. And that's where I learned the game. And it was wonderful. <laughs> Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. Atlanta Braves. Yeah, that so they showed the replay again. It hit him square on the knee. Didn't even touch the glove to slow it down. Everybody was coming over checking on him in the dugout rightfully so. But he's I mean he's spraying his hands and getting ready for an at bat, so I guess he's going to be good to go. First pitch to Giorme is high and out of the zone it's one and oh Luis Guillorme getting the start at second base with the injury to Ozzy Albies as he head to the 10 day IL today the one oh pitch right down the pipe 94 miles an hour one and one with Guillorme and David Fletcher who's coming up from triple a what you won't have is the one one pitches right there for a strike on the outer edge one and two i don't believe you'll have as as, as uh as much power at the second base position but you do have a couple of veterans playing second base as the one two pitch grounded over to first it is going to be scooped by singleton underhands it flips it over to Brown, who's covering the bag, a 3-1 put out, one away. The only good news of that entire thing is you, you don't, you're don't you not calling a guy down from AAA that's not ready, that's a kid, that's bright lights, big city type of thing going on. David Fletcher is a, is a, a pretty good veteran infielder and has had a pretty good career. But it's just the little things that you're going to miss with Ozzy, not not to mention the power in his bat. First pitch on the way to Chadwick Tromp is down and away, just grabs the outer edge. It's 0-1. Borderline call, but did look like it grabbed the zone. The 0-1 in the dirt, 1-1. Chadwick Trump, 29 years old from Aruba. Of course, he's filling in for Sean Murphy, 
We haven't gotten a recent update on him. You would hope you would see him sometime in early May. The 1-1. One, one. Swing and fouled out of play. 1-2. and two. Got so much talent on this team, but you can't keep having the having what's essentially turning into the Gwinnett Stripers going out there to to play Major League Baseball teams. The one two from Brown, 39th pitch of the night, swung on, grounded over to short. Should be easy. Pena flips it over to first. Six to three on your scorecard, two away. That'll bring Acuna to the plate, and he's he's walking okay. Him and Diaz are having a laugh at the plate, so hopefully major injury has been averted. First pitch on the way to Acuna is down and in. For a ball one and I tried to get her and chase that knuckle curve. Braves one, Houston nothing. If you're just joining us, came from a solo shot by Orlando Arcia that just stayed into the crowd, bouncing off the rail. This is the 1 0 pitch. Swing and that ball's lifted high and deep into right field. Making a running catch is Kyle Tucker spoiling what would have been extra bases. To end the inning. Three up, three down, and we come back. Myers and the top of the order coming to the plate. Yo, I guess I'm going to need to be the one to explain to all of the 40-year-old people and above. So 40-plus. Yo, you guys keep sending out these thumbs-up emojis. Yo, we depict the thumbs-up as a f It's rude. You're rude. All right, those of you that had thumbs-up emoji on your bingo from hell card, Go ahead and mark it off because that's the world we now live in. Younger generations are offended, bothered by, consider rude, triggered by a thumbs up emoji. So for example, if you spend a hundred dollars and you get a ten dollar reward, you just made ten dollars. That's 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 not accurate. That's that's not how that works. Yeah, uh -huh. because now in a future purchase you just saved yourself ten dollars. If you return an item at the store, you just earn money. So if you return something and buy something at the same time, it was free. I, I just, I, I feel like. Or this just... one's so good. Like if you go to Starbucks or Dunkin' and you use your app, you scan and pay, it's free. Cause that money was already there. I'm never gonna have money. What do you mean? Uh, is this is, is this, this is, this is your mindset when you go to a store? How you, this is how just you... how girl math works. Girl math isn't a thing! Armchair. In 1973, a period of Watergate turmoil in Washington. In October, the Reds were playing the Mets in the National League Championship Series, and Potter Stewart was hearing, I won't quite say listening to, oral arguments in the Supreme Court, and he had a law clerk feeding him information on what was going on elsewhere. And at one point, the clerk handed him a slip of paper, and on it, it said, Crane Pool flies to right, Agnew resigns. Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. Atlanta Braves. Lead this one, one, nothing. Ronaldo Lopez goes back to work. He'll face the center fielder. Jake Myers, who gets the start tonight, 27 year old from Omaha, Nebraska, played his college ball in Omaha, Nebraska for the Cornhuskers. Righty, righty matchup. First pitch on the way. 95 just misses outside. One and oh, drafted by the Astros in the 13th round. 391st overall pick back in 2017. The 1-0 just misses below the zone 2-0. And he's been with the Astros, the big club, as a platoon player since 2021. The 2-0 pitch swung on and fouled back out of play. It's 2-1.
2-1 count. Righty, righty, the pitch. Swing, and that ball is slapped into left center field. That's going to get down for a base hit and roll up against the wall. Michael Harris, the second, quickly gets to it, gets it into the infield, and keeps Myers to a leadoff double. If you don't get that back in quickly, he's standing on third. Good defensive play by Harris. Got those weird corners in that outfield out there in Houston. You've seen that ball before. It'll bounce around and make it difficult play. You got all the all the nooks and crannies. That one came off the wall pretty clean. That's the good news. The bad news is Jose Altuve's red hot bat is coming to the plate. The first pitch on the way to the right hander is a slider right there for a strike. It's on one. Braves one, Stroh's nothing. Bottom of the third, Braves defense, infield defense playing back pretty straight away in the outfield. The 0 1 pitch. Outside wide, 1 and 1. So a 1 1 count. Pitch on the way. Down and away, two and one. The two one pitch just misses the zone. Outer edge try to get him to chase three and one. The three one righty righty swing and fouls it straight back three and two. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Lincoln is the is the home of the Huskers. I was thinking of Omaha, the uh, home of the College World Series. Ronaldo Lopez comes set. The full count pitch just taps it foul. It ricochets. Altuve stay alive. That ball bounced off the plate. Taking a second look at it, I think it might have bounced off the arm of Alex Tossi. So a full count offering. Righty righty matchup. Nobody out. Runner on second. The wind up the pitch. Caught looking strike three. He got caught watching the paint dry. One away. You tell Altuve didn't like it. He tossed his bat. He thought he was going to get the call to hit on down to first. So if you look at the box on TV, it looked like it missed. But if you look at the replay, it looks it looks like it might have just painted the edge. It's hard for us to remember, but that box on TV is not 100% accurate. First pitch on the way to Jordan Alvarez. Called for an outside strike. It's on one. Righty, lefty. The 0 1. Swatted foul down the left field line. 96 mile an hour fastball. It's 0 2. Pirates lead the Mets 1 0, bottom of the seventh. The 0-2 pitch, kicks and fires in the dirt. Does it get? It gets away, but Trump is able to jump on it and keep the runner from heading to third. Good defensive play by Trump there because you want to keep that speedy Myers off of third base with only one out. The 1-2 to Alvarez, righty, lefty. And home plate umpire Alex Tossi comes out and calls time for a second. I believe he's calling 
Well, no, it was, it was just a, a quick timeout. The one, two misses outside two and two. At first I thought he was calling an automatic ball, but, but it appears that that's not the case. So a two, two count. The pitch on the way, swung on and hit right to Olsen. He'll scoop it, step on the pillow, two away. Thank you, Lonely Satellite. On the play, Myers will scoot on down to third, but there are two outs now. So you love that. With Kyle Tucker coming to the plate, you don't need it to be any easier than what it already is for Kyle Tucker to swing that bat. First pitch on the way to Tucker is down and in for a ball. It's 1-0. and oh. Appreciate the super sticker. Lonely satellite, the 1-0 pitch. Righty-lefty matchup. This is down and away 2 and oh. Standing on deck is Bregman. We saw this the first time up with Tucker. Ronaldo Lopez pitched around him to get to Bregman. Not that Bregman's an easy out. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Slider right down the pipe. Couldn't time it up. Two and one. Ronaldo Lopez is at 49 pitches here in the bottom of the third. So he's kind of flirting with the high pitch count. But if he can get out of this relatively easily here. He'll keep it down. The 2-1 from Raylo. Swung on. Pops it up. 97-mile-an-hour fastball in on the hands. Drifting over. Making the catch is Kelnick, and that'll end the inning. Houston threatens but fails to score. When we come back, the heart of the order. It measures be. just nine Never inches break. in circumference. Weighs only Drink about a whole five. lot of whiskey. Chase a lot of women and uh, become a legend and die. Hard work does not guarantee success. It doesn't, and it never will. But it absolutely will put you in the best position to be able to achieve it. I think that's one thing that we've seen throughout the course of this season. We got some remarkable men that are sitting here in front of me. And the work you put in, the decision that you made, just to say yes, because you know what? It's really easy when things don't go well, right? And you hurt, right? And you're angry and you're sad. The easiest thing to do is to pull back and stop. That's what the world wants you to do. You deserve better than that. So I apologize to you. If you guys are playing your last game, you have a season that will be remembered forever. And I respect the hell out of who you are for being in here today, for stepping on that field and going and giving everything. You have my respect. Be nice to him when he gets here. I will. Just because he doesn't like football, he doesn't... He doesn't like football? I've told you this already. He doesn't like it at all? No. What does he do over a weekend? Well, we do things. Like read books and go for walks and spend time together. I don't think you should be seeing this guy. Why not? I don't trust him. The world doesn't revolve around football, Dad. It does. I still don't understand what he does over a weekend. Well, this weekend we're going shopping. No. Baseball is a red-blooded sport for red-blooded men. It's no pink tea. And Molly Coddles had better stay out. It's a struggle for supremacy. A survival of the fittest. Ty Cobb liked sentimentality in his opponents because he had none himself. Baseball, he said, is something like a war. Ty Cobb is one of the great natural forces of baseball. Testament to how far you can get simply through will. I don't think Ty Cobb had tremendous, tremendous natural ability. I don't think he would be a great athlete today. But his intensity, his drive was unparalleled. Cobb was pursued by demons, and he took out all of his aggressions on the playing field. Everyone was his enemy. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. Your Atlanta Braves lead this one, one nothing. Hard of the Atlanta Braves order coming to the plate. Harris, Riley, and Olsen as they get their second look at Hunter Brown. Harris 0 for 1, first pitch on the way. He's a bender, knuckle curve on the outer edge. It's 1 0. Appears that's the pitch that Brown tries to get the left handers to chase. The 1 0 pitch. 
Swing, and that ball's hit on the ground. That's going to get through for a base hit. And you're Atlanta Braves. One on, nobody out. Hard hit ball right through the hole. In between second and first. Two Hopkins and just sizzle past Singleton. One on, nobody out. That'll bring Austin Riley to the plate. Austin Riley, pitch on the way. Grabs for a strike at the top of the zone, top shelf. It's 0 1. The 0 1 pitch. Brown comes set, kicks and fires in the dirt. Good block by Diaz, one and one. Harris stays put, doesn't even offer to run down to second. Didn't get that far away from Diaz. So a one one count. Brown's going to turn around and flip it over to first to try to keep Harris close by. It's his first attempt towards first, so he's got one more before he would have to either pick him off or come home. The 1-1, one, one, high and out of the zone, 94 miles an hour, 2-0. Braves one, Astros nothing, top of the fourth, the 2-1 count, the pitch, swing, and pops it up, got it in on his hands. Riley, can of corn, caught by Singleton over by first, one away. Riley's been reaching for those pitches here in the early going. It's got to be the strategy on most of these pitching coaches to come at Riley in on the hands. So enticing coming in, he thinks he can turn on it, and then it just makes a dive in on his hands at the last second. That'll bring Olsen to the plate. Olsen, first pitch high and out of the zone, or high and inside, I should say, 1-0. and Righty-lefty matchup. The ice house digs in. Brown comes set. The pitch, swing and a miss. Splitter just over the top. One and one. It's a good pitch by Brown. He, that thing comes in there at about 87, 88 miles an hour. His fastball's coming in about 10 miles an hour higher. The one, one. Knuckle curve down and in. They're going to say he went around third base umpire Tony Rondazzo. Says he went around. Olsen does not like it. He slams his bat. Pirates are losing the lead against the Mets. It's 3-1 to one in the bottom of the seventh. And the Phillies made easy work of the Rockies. 5 nothing, I believe, was the final there. The 1-2 pitch. Misses outside. 2-2. Two and two. So a 2-2 two -two count. Top of the fourth inning, one on, one out. Brown turns around, flips it over to first to keep Harris close by. First move of this at bat. The 2-2, two -two. pitch on the way, down and in, ball three. So a full count to Olsen, standing on deck, looming is Marcelo Zuna. Nobody much hotter in Major League Baseball right now than the Big Zoo. But I don't think Brown wants to lay one in there to Olsen. Full count. Harris on first one out the payoff pitch. Swing and a missed strike three. And Harris takes off 
and they're gonna they're gonna say they got him on the wallet. Harris says he's safe. He's shaking his finger, telling Brian Snicker to challenge the play. And Walt Weiss believe we're gonna get a challenge. Step away for one second as we. Oh yeah, I, well, that's gonna be a close one. We'll step away for one second. Join the country club today. The first month is free. You'll have access to badges, one of a kind emojis to display your. Never mind. Walt Weiss has said that they are not going to challenge it. We'll be back in a flash. I need a four-letter word for disappointment. Eric. My wife said to me, "What starts with F and ends with K?" I said, "No, it doesn't." Hello. Hi, is Mark there? Yeah. It's me, Shannon. We met at Jack's party. Yeah. How can I forget? Wow. How you doing? I haven't heard from you in uh... nine months. I'm chair. Can we get back to the version of TikTok where everybody thought they were a professional dancer or comedian or singer and not everybody trying to be a wannabe QVC host? I can't watch 800 more women rub a red light on their face and think that it's going to stop them from aging. You are 22, Jessica. You don't have wrinkles. What do you know? You're on, you're on my porch. What's up? I'm confused right now. It's one in the morning. I'm confused. You were not expecting me. No. Why would I be expecting you? I just figured you would think I would miss you by now and I'd be here. You saw me yesterday. Sorry, dude. I just want to hang out with my friend and you always make me feel bad about it. Why do you make me feel bad about wanting to hang out with my friend? You just have all this time because you don't have a job. I'm sorry that I don't have to work for money and you do. But just because I miss you, I should not be punished. You're drunk. Maybe one glass. Well, it's Wednesday. You know how it goes on Wednesdays, man. I'm sorry. It's all mixed up with peanuts, tobacco juice, and a hearty feeling among the fans joshing each other. Always this raucous good spirit. Everybody came to have a good time. But that's the way I remember it. The whole stands full of people all roaring. And I guess it's true of any sports, but in baseball, never known an instance where so instantly a whole crowd could be brought to its feet, roaring with delight over just a clean crack of a bat against the ball. It's a great sport that way. <laughs> Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. The first pitch on the way to Bregman is swung on, pops it up high in the sky. Can of corn over by short. Arcia makes the catch one away. Got him in on the hands, very reminiscent to what Riley Chase. So one down, bottom of the fourth. Philly did win that game, by the way, five to nothing was the final. First pitch on the way to Diaz. Righty righty matchup is right there for a strike. It's on one. Out of town scoreboard, real quick. No one pitch. Swung on, dropped it into center field just over the out extended glove of Guillaume at second. And it's a one out single for the Strohs. Baltimore 11 to 3 winners against the Twins. That was that was one of the cover country picks of today Baltimore on the money line. Off to a pretty good start on that. If you haven't caught those videos, we drop them every day Monday through Saturday. Pick about three or four picks of Major League Baseball. First pitch on the way to Pena is swung on and fouled back out of play. It's 0-1. I believe we're 18 units above 500 right now. So the 0-1 count, righty, righty, runner on first. Pena is one for one with a double in the second. The pitch on the way to 96 just paints the inside block. It's 0-2. Mets three to one over the 
Pirates in the seventh. The 0-2 pitch. Lopez comes set, kicks and fires. Swing, and that ball's sawed off over the first base side. 97 mile an hour fastball up top at 0-2 once again. Toronto 5-1 to one over the Yankees. That game is in the sixth. Boston 6-5 over Cleveland in the seventh. San Diego 4-1 to one over the Brewers. And they're heading to the sixth. That was that was another one of the, the picks on the cover country. Five and a half under. So we barely got that one. The 0-2 pitch from Lopez. Swing! Did he go around? Look like he did. Oh, my word. First base umpire, Dan Bellino, says he did not go around. I don't know about that one. Looking. Oh, yeah. He offered it that one. Are you kidding me? So, a 1-2 count. Swing and a miss. Strike three. That one he came out of his shoes on. Two away. Arizona and the Cubs, they're getting underway here in a little bit. I think I gave you the Boston score. Red Sox six, Cleveland five in the seventh. From earlier today, Detroit four to two winners come from behind victory against the Rangers. Tigers off to a good start this year. We'll see those Rangers on Friday night. First pitch on the way to Singleton. John Singleton takes the first pitch up top for a strike on the outer edge. It's 0-1. He grounded out in the second, 0-for-1. Righty, lefty, the pitch. Fastball right there, dots the eye. 97 on the outer edge. It's 0-2. Cardinals and A's are about to get underway, along with Cincinnati and Seattle. Rays and Angels tied up in the 11th. The 0-2 pitch swung on and dribbled through the infield. That's going to get through for a base hit. Seeing eye single. Wasn't the hardest hit ball, but... It got through the 4-6 hole. Maybe it was hit harder than I, than I realized. It didn't look like it was hit very hard, but they got the exit velocity up over 100 so Miami 6 to 3 over San Fran and if you're looking for the KC White Sox game it has been postponed So a 10 count to McCormick as he takes the first pitch outside the zone righty righty matchup the pitch on the way swing and a miss comes out of his shoes it's 1 and 1 Nice slider. Lopez really has that slider working. It's at 63 pitches. I'd like to see him get out of this one quickly. We may be able to get a full six innings, maybe even set into the seventh with them. The 1-1 one, one from Raylo. Fastball, 97 miles an hour to go around. He said he did on that one. One and two. I'd love to see the replay on that because that looked like less of an offering than the one on Pena that he that he called no dice. So a one-two count. Lopez kicks and fires slider. Good backhand by Trump. That could have been a disaster heading towards the backstop, but instead backhanded stab and it's two and two. Deuces wild here in the bottom of the fourth. Two on, two out. The 2-2 two -two count. The pitch. Swing, and that ball is sent foul down the right field line. Do it again at 2-2. Two and two. So once again, a 2-2 two -two count with two on. The pitch. Swing! And that ball's fisted foul down the right field line. Do it again.
The 2-2 from Lopez. Swing and a miss, strike three. Set him up with those sliders and fired 97 right by his eyeballs. We'll be back in a flash here on Braves Country. Okay, not to exaggerate, but I feel like I'm already tired tomorrow. Here are some baseball facts that you might not have known. For those who don't know, normal human eyesight is 2020 vision. A research study found that the average baseball player has 2013 vision, with the top 2% of MLB players having 29.2 vision. That means that some baseball players have vision that's more than twice as good as the normal human. Okay, few rules. One, no smoking. Cigarettes or drugs? Both. Oh, come on. How long does this class even last? Like an hour. What? All right, I'll smoke in the car before we go in. Two, no swearing. Are you f***ing me? Roth. Are you crapping me? Three, no knives. What if there's an attack? It's a bunch of children and mothers in a pool. That's exactly what I would attack. Hey, Braves Country, this is Mac McGee with Braves Country Radio. We are bringing you pitch by pitch, play by play of your Atlanta Braves all year long. Please like and subscribe today. It's free, and it helps us bring you more of the game we all love. Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Damn it, Gump. Give me one margarita, I'm open my legs. But you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dan. For nearly 20 years, a vaudeville comedian and baseball fanatic named DeWolf Hopper had been reciting a lengthy poem by Ernest Lawrence Thayer called Casey at the Bat, a ballad of the Republic. He had first tried it out on a Broadway audience in 1888 and gotten such applause that he kept it in the act. He would go on to recite the poem more than 10,000 times. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. Atlanta Braves, looks like uh, we got a new member. Welcome in, Smooth 69. Appreciate you joining the country club. Atlanta Braves lead this one. Hunter Brown will go back out there for his fifth inning of work and the first pitch on the way, a cutter in the dirt to Marcel Ozuna. It's 1-0. Ozuna grinded into a double play, if you'll remember, when he came up. It was a 2-1 count, and he got a dirty call to make it 2-2 two and two and then rolled over into a double play. The 1-0 pitch. Swing, and that ball's rifle. What a hot shot and a great play by Jeremy Pena at short. It's going to be a 6-3 put out. <laughs> but he might need a defibrillator after that one. I mean, that was a heart stopper. Holy cow. That ball was smoked off the bat. Even Ozuna's outs are getting hit hard. He is in a zone. I don't know. Can, can we call it a zone at this point? He's been doing this for like a year now. It's unbelievable where he was last April compared to where he's been from May until now. First pitch on the way to Orlando Arcia. It's high and inside for a ball. 1-0. and Orlando Arcia, the man of the night so far. One for one with a solo shot. The 1-0 pitch, slider down and away. It's 1-1. One one. Braves 1, Strohs nothing, top of the 5th. Brown only at 57 pitches, so pretty manageable. The 1-1. One one. Fastball right there on the outer edge. 1-2. and two. They keep showing that guy that got accused of, hit, of touching... RC is home run, which is far from the truth. The one, two down and in, try to get him to chase that slider. That was good patience by Arcia. Two and two. He's seeing the ball. Well, at hitting three sixty four now, nine sixty two OPS. Righty, righty. Brown lifts the glove, turns and fires swing. And that ball's hit deep into the hole. It's short. Pena's got plenty of time, throws it a little high, 
But the catch is made by Singleton. Two away. So two down. And that'll bring up the left-handed stick of Jared Kelnick. Righty lefty pitch. Fastball just grabs the inner part of the zone. Maybe it's 0 and 1. That was very close, but probably grabbed the inside block. The 0 1. Infield playing him to pull. Outfield straight away. The pitch. Swung on and lifted into center field. That's going to get down for a base hit. And your Atlanta Braves got something cooking here in the top of the fifth. One on, two outs. That'll bring Luis Guillorme to the plate. Just joining us and wondering what's going on with the lineup. Kelvin is not batting that. He's batting seven. Guillaume in for the injured Ozzie Albies, who went to the 10-day 10 10-day 10 IL with a foot. They're calling it a foot fracture, and Trump is batting ninth as the catcher, so he's on deck. The first pitch on the way to Guillaume is a fastball inside for a ball. It's 1-0. and The 1-0, righty-lefty. Pitch to Guillaume. Brown kicks and fires right there at the knees. 94, one and zero. One thing I like about Guillaume, I always liked about it when even before he played for the Braves, is that any guy that goes to the plate with no gloves, the one one swung on, chopped over to second, just rolled it over, and Altuve will grab it and flip it over to first. Well, maybe he needs to use some gloves. We'll be back in a flash. Braves lead at one nothing. bottom of the fifth. Why do boomers get up an hour early just to sit there at the table and drink coffee? Because we don't want to listen to your bull crap. It takes the cup of coffee to listen to your stuff. All right, tell your joke. Why are you thinking so funny? Why? Because? Steak sauce or no steak sauce? All right, okay, first of all, if you got a steak that's good enough, then you're not going to need no steak sauce. But if you're eating a steak that's like charcoal, then you're going to end up with some kind of steak. If you don't shut up, I'm talking. That girl looked like a grown-up oopa loopa. (laughs) (laughs) I prefer minion, but okay. (laughs) She had the body type of a minion. (laughs) Unibody. (laughs) Yeah, like everybody asks me, like, so what's your type? And I'm like, I've been all over the board at this point. He really has. I, I, I was imp- I'm impressed with like one or two of them that he brings home. And then the next one, I'm like, what happened? That one that you brought on that had yeah, like four chins. Lower the expectations. But you you I, can't I, get I, no I, lower. I getting, you like, can't no, get no, no lower. Armchair. Let me tell you something. If the U.S. government decides to stick a tracking device up your ass, you say thank you. <laughs> and God bless America. Harry Wright eats baseball, breathes baseball, thinks baseball, dreams baseball, and incorporates baseball in his prayers. Cincinnati Inquirer. Hi, I'm Mac McGee. Braves Country Radio, pull up a chair. You're home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Braves Country Baseball. A couple of games where you kind of expected the Braves offense to really click against the starting pitching they're facing in both games. We're sitting at one run heading to the bottom of the fifth. Braves bats woke up late last night. Winning that one six to one. The first pitch on the way from Lopez to Myers is a slider right there at the knees for a strike. It's 0 and 1. It is 3 to 1 in Queens. They're heading to the top of the ninth. 
Pirates going to try to climb back in that one. The 0-1 pitch, down and away, 1-1. One and one. Pittsburgh off to a good start. You'd like to see him take at least one from New York. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Just grabs the bottom of the zone. Myers doesn't like it, 1-2. and two. Myers scalded one into the gap. The leadoff doubles last time out. The one, two. Lopez comes set 72nd offering of the evening. Just missed. Would have loved to have had that call. It looked like it was the tad off the edge. But as well as he's pitched tonight, I'm surprised he didn't get the benefit of the doubt. The two, two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Kind of a half-hearted check swing. One of those ones you start to swing, and by the time you realize that ball is well out of the zone, it's too late to hold up one away. One down. That'll bring up the top of the order, Jose Altuve, 0 for 2 with a ground out and a strikeout. The first pitch on the way. Swing and a miss at a slider, diving off the outer edge. It's 0-1. Righty-righty matchup. Braves infield playing Altuve to pull the 0-1. Chop foul hard down the third baseline. It's 0-2. This signing by Lopez is just is turning out to be bigger and bigger if that terrible injury to Spencer Strider. The 0-2. Lopez comes set, fires, swing and a miss, strike three. Got her to chase the slider well off the edge. He went fishing off the pier without a pole, and they're still away. Good pitch. Ronaldo Lopez now with seven strikeouts in four and two thirds. First pitch on the way to Alvarez is sawed off foul down the left field line, bending into the seats. Oh, and one Jordan Alvarez, dangerous bat at the plate. The O one one pitch down below the knees. One and one. Alvarez 0 for 2, third time through the lineup. They're showing the opponent's batting average versus Raylo over the last several years. Third time through the lineup is usually very dicey for Raylo. As the 1 2 is fouled off, fastball on the outer edge. But I'm not I'm not positive this is the same Ronaldo Lopez. He Remember, those statistics are from about three years ago. The one-two pitch swung on and popped up into left field. Coming in is Kelnick, and he'll make the catch. So three up, three down. We come back. Trop, Acuna, Harris coming to the dish. Every time I see a homeless person, they got a dog. Y'all investing in the wrong roof. What's the worst UK accent? Probably Birmingham. Okay, everyone says that. Oscars. <laughs> No, I like a Scouse accent, but Birmingham. Where are you from? Newcastle. Everyone's favorite. Up the twos. I got lost in the game. I mean, the ballpark, and the people, the color, the sounds, the smells. And it's a passion. It's a very, very big part of my life. Sometimes I, I like to be 11 years old. I, I like being part of something that's bigger than me. It's good for your soul to invest in something you can't control. You're a romantic. You have a lyrical soul. You can love under the best and worst conditions.
what a big at bat by Lieutenant Dan. Here comes the 2 1 pinch to Jorge Soler, and it is swung on and roasted into left field. Ram a lama ding dong zip boom bam over the bullpen wall. It's three to two. Your Atlanta Braves. That ball was crushed like a damn absolute jackpot, baby. Three to two. Atlanta leads the game, and the place is going bananas. I hope y'all are dancing in your living room or wherever you're at. <laughs> Atlanta back to back solo jacks. We've got a one run lead. Look out. Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. We got the number nine, one, and two hitters to start off the top of the sixth. Pirates, by the way, are down to their last strike in Queens. And as I say that, Smith just finished them off. He closed the game. The Mets win that one, three to one. So Philly's already won. The Braves need to win to keep pace. First pitch on the way from Brown to Trump is down and in for a ball. It's 1-0. Oh. The 1-0 oh from the right-hander. Kicks and deals. Swing, and that ball's lifted into center field. But right at Jake Myers, he'll make the catch. F8 in your scorecard, one away. Ron Acuna Jr. come to the plate. Acuna yet to hit a home run. That's the bad news. The good news is he's in the game. If you missed it earlier, he took a ball off the knee sliding for a catch in the outfield in right field that ricocheted off his knee and shot over to left field. That's hard, hard the ball. how hard the ball was hit how hard the ball hit his knee i should say cunha is one for two with a single a stolen base he was caught stealing all in the first inning the 0-1 down and away one and one the one one count to acuna harris stands on deck in the hole is riley third time through the order of seeing brown Hunter Brown has spun a gem so far tonight. The 1-1. One, one. Misses outside, 92 miles an hour. 2-1 your count. Miami also won, so that they'll keep pace. The 2-1 pitch. Swung on, chopped over to Second easy play for Altuve, 4-3 put out, two away. Washington has just started getting started in Los Angeles. Patrick Corbin's on the mound for the Nationals. Every time I've seen him pitch in the last few years, he's gotten pounded. I can only imagine what the Dodgers offense is going to do to Patrick Corbin. I think the Dodgers are doing some version of a bullpen game. That's what they were saying earlier. First pitch on the way to Harris. It's a swing and a miss strike over the top. It's 0-1. Between the Patrick Corbin contract, which was an absolute just waste of money, and then, of course, Steven Strasburg, who has since retired is the 0-1 pitch, swing and a miss. Top of the zone, 0 and 2. They had a little over $300 million locked up in those two arms and have gotten nothing out of them, essentially. Patrick Corbett is nothing more than an innings eater 
with a high ERA at this point in his career. The 0-2 pitch, swung on and hit over to first. Singleton's got it. He'll beat Harris by about a step or so. Harris was busting it down the line, but that'll end the inning. Three up, three down once again, heading to the bottom of the sixth, the heart of the Astro order. I've been feeling kind of down today, so I'm just going to go to the gas station and let the crackheads tell me I look like the youngster. You may not see it, but you'll see it, especially for $2. Hey, Braves country, I'm Mac McGee. Join us for Pitch by Pitch, Play by Play, the classic call of Braves country baseball. We're bringing you Atlanta Braves baseball all year long. Jump into our pregame show, Braves Country Today, just before first pitch. Stick around for the postgame show, Braves Country Tonight, where we will open up the phone lines and react to your calls or your comments all year long. That's Braves Country Radio, pitch by pitch, play by play, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Days. He never complained, never alibied. He was never known to criticize a teammate or call an opposing ball player lucky. He accepted his great success modestly and the many vicissitudes of his life in silence. He was easy to like and hard to know. New York World Telegram. If Walter Johnson and Christy Mathewson had a challenger for the title of best pitcher in baseball, it was a troubled young right-hander named Grover Cleveland Alexander, a Nebraska farm boy, the son and grandson of alcoholics, and one of 13 children. He had honed his startling accuracy by hurling rocks to kill birds to help feed his family. He was a minor league star at 22 when a short stop's throw to first hit him squarely between the eyes. He was unconscious for two days, then stricken with double vision. He kept throwing anyway, and after months of relentless work, his vision suddenly and mysteriously cleared, though he remained subject to epileptic seizures for the rest of his life. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. Ronald Lopez goes back to work. One nothing your score. Lopez sitting at 80 pitches. First pitch on the way is a curveball. Just missed the outer edge to Kyle Tucker. It's 1-0. and Tucker 0 for 1 with the walk in the first. Lopez comes set, fires a 94-mile-an-hour fastball, just kisses the black on the outer edge. 1-1. One and one. The one one swing and a miss pulled the change on that one. That was a nice pitch by Lopez. Trump tosses it back to Lopez and it gets away. No one on base, so no harm, no foul. One, two count. Nobody on Lopez at 83 pitches. You figure this is probably his last inning. Hopefully it's a clean one. The one, two swung on and lifted high and deep into left field going back on the track up against the wall. Jerry Kelnick will make the catch one away. One down. That'll bring Bregman to the plate. Bregman. Righty, righty matchup. The pitch from Lopez. Fastball right there at the knees. Down the pipe, it's 0-1. Atlanta Braves. one nothing. your score. Still got three more innings to go. You have to figure as the 0-1 pitch is a curveball down and away. 1-1. If this is Lopez's last inning, we haven't seen Matzik in a few days. You could use 
Raziel Iglesias for sure is the one one down and away two and one be interesting to see how they build that that third inning of work and a lot of it would have to do with what the Astros do with their lineup but as the two one pitch just grabs the outer edge two and two we've seen Pierce Johnson quite a bit. We've seen Jesse quite a bit. AJ's been in and out. The 2-2. Swing pops it up. Let's stay in play. Back behind the home plate. Giving Chase just bending into the front row behind home plate. Chadwick Trump trying to make the, the play, but he ran out of room 2-2. Two and two. So a 2-2 count. Righty, righty. The pitch on the way. Swing and lifts it high. Can of corn drifting back, making the catches Olsen two down. Braves one, Astros nothing. Later start to this one tonight at 8-10 first pitch. Tomorrow, we get an early crack at it, 2-10 first pitch. Max Freed, the pitcher for the Braves tomorrow. First pitch on the way to Ronaldo Lopez, from Ronaldo Lopez, is up high and out of the zone. It's 1-0. Justin Verlander is expected to make his debut this week. The 1 0. Down and away, 2 0. He's coming off the IL after injury in the offseason that delayed his spring training. The 2 0 pitch. Swing and a miss. 96 miles an hour, still bringing it here in the sixth. When he is coming out of the bullpen, Raylo can dial it up to about 98, but you don't see him do that much as a star. He's got to dial it back a little bit. The 2 1 pitch swung on, lifted into center field, coming in, making the catch is money, Mike. And that'll end the inning. Michael the Hawk Harris, another good defensive play out there in center field, will be back in a flash. The heart of the Braves order, Riley, leads us off when we come back. What do you think has become so expensive that it's just not worth it anymore? Life. Thank you for listening. Hey, Braves country. I'm Mac McGee. Join us for Pitch by Pitch, Play by Play, the classic call of Braves country baseball. We're bringing you Atlanta Braves baseball all year long. Jump into our pregame show, Braves Country Today, just before first pitch. Stick around for the postgame show, Braves Country Tonight, where we will open up the phone lines and react to your calls or your comments all year long. That's Braves Country Radio, pitch by pitch, play by play, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. You don't slap me for telling jokes. That's unacceptable. And the thing is, you know, like, you know, Will, I love him, but he was, you know, the happy-go-lucky before the slap, you know, and nobody saw that coming, which was weird. You know, 50 Cent had been going ham on Jada. He didn't slap mm -hmm. 50 Cent. He slapped mm -hmm. 50 pounds. Chris Rock can't defend himself. His hands don't even make fists. You ever see the little hands? He got, like, <laughs> little back scratches. Armchair. <laughs> Albert Goodwill Spaulding. He had been the finest pitcher of the 1870s. He learned his baseball from Harry Wright, who had paid him $1,500 a year to pitch for the Boston Red Stockings. In 1876, he left Boston for Chicago, lured by William Hulbert's offer of a $500 raise and 25% of the gate. But Spaulding had still bigger things in mind. At age 27, he stopped pitching entirely to become a full-time promoter of baseball 
and himself. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. Atlanta Braves lead this 1-1-0. We're heading to the top of the seventh inning. Austin Riley will lead us off. He'll be followed by Olsen and Ozuna if anybody gets on. Arcia, who is responsible for the one lone run so far, a solo shot. First pitch on the way to Austin Riley. Swung on and chopped foul down the line. It's 0-1. It'll be Max Freed versus J.P. France tomorrow. The 0-1 pitch in the dirt, 1-1. One one. You would feel good about the fact J.P. France has an 8.22 ERA and a 1.89 whip in 15 innings this year. But then you look at Max Freed's numbers. He's 8.74 ERA and a 1.85 whip. Righty, righty matchup. Brown kicks and fires. High and inside. Does not go around two and one. They check down the first base line. Dan, Dan Bellino says no dice. So a two one to Riley. Nobody on top of the seventh inning. The pitch. Swing and that ball scalded down the left field line. That's going to get in for a base hit. That should be extra bases. Here comes the rake. He's flying around first, heading to second. And it's a leadoff double for your Atlanta Braves. One hundred and five miles an hour off the bat. Bregman tried to make the diving catch for, but that ball was scalded past his outstretched glove. So runner on second, nobody out. Matt Olson coming to the plate. First pitch on the way to Olson's high and out of the zone. It's one and oh. There is action in the Houston Astro bullpen. Brown's at 79 pitches. You wonder how long they're going to try to go with him. I thought that might have been it, but I was reading up on it earlier this week is the 1 0 pitch. It's right down the pipe. For a strike one and one. They've used a lot of their bullpen in Houston recently. And he's given them a great effort, and they I, they probably just want to get as much as they can out of him. He's only at 80 pitches. We are in the seventh inning. So you gotta count count the up downs along with the pitches. The one one. Swing and a miss. Over the top, it's one and two. Toronto leads the Yankees five to three in the bottom of the eighth in Toronto. The right-hander warming up in the pen for the Astros. You figure he may be coming in to face Ozuna. The one-two. Inside, two and two. 94-mile-an-hour fastball misses. So a two-two count. Riley. On second, Brown's going to step off the rubber and reset, so that'll count as one of his moves to first. Not that Riley's much of a threat to, to run, to steal, but he, he does go for from time to time. The 2-2 two -two pitch, high and out of the zone. Ball three. Make sure to stay tuned for Braves country tonight, post-game show tonight. We'll react to tonight's game and look forward to tomorrow's along with what the plan going forward may be. The Braves with all the injuries. The 3-2 to Olsen. Down and away, ball four. So, Matt Olsen heads on down to first. Runners on first and second, nobody out. Oh. 
they're going to have a quick powwow, and I believe that'll be it for Hunter Brown. No, it's, it's the pitching coach coming out there, so that's a little bit of a surprise. The runners on first and second, nobody out, and Marcel Ozuna, unless this is a stall tactic, but the right-hander up in the pen's been stretched out for a minute, so he should be ready. So they're going to have Brown face Ozuna. Lando Arcia stands on deck. Remember, Arcia took him deep, so I seriously doubt if Ozuna gets on, you'll see Arcia face Brown. But I didn't think we'd see Brown stick around for Ozuna with runners on first and second, nobody out. Righty, righty matchup. The 85th pitch of the night for Brown in the dirt. 1 0. Tried to get him to chase the knuckle curve. That ball skipped out in front of home plate. The infield for the Astros is on a shift to the left side. The pitch in the dirt once again. Splitter 2 and 0. Oh. Brown looks like he might be running out of gas, and it's a little strange that. They've left him out there this long. That right-hander is definitely warmed up. The 2-0 pitch. Outside wide, ball three. So a 3-0 count. Ozuna does have a hitting streak. Sitting at, I believe, 13-14 games right now. Got a hit last night. The 3-0 pitch, down and away, ball four. Now the bases are juiced. Nobody out. And they will go make the, the move to the pen. That was a little odd that they rolled the dice like that. We'll see if it pays off to the Braves when we come back. Orlando Arce going to face the right-hander coming out of the pen here on Braves Country. In 1970, the Cardinals signed a catcher out of high school named Randy Poffo. He played in the minors for the Cardinals and the Reds for four years before quitting baseball. He instead pursued professional wrestling, where he became the legendary macho man Randy Savage. I have to tell you, my grandma had four babies at once. Four at once? Yeah, they called them quadruplets. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. And the doctor come up there to, to deliver the babies, and he had my grandpappy holding the, the lantern, and he said, "Young, come the baby, and the baby come out, and then he held up the lantern. He said, he said, hold up that lantern again. There's, I think there's another. Sure enough, another baby come out. He said, hold that lantern up. I said, I think there's another. Grandpappy held up, and there comes another. The fourth baby started to come. He said, hold that lantern up. Grandpappy said, no, I think it's the light that's attracting them. I'm a Sagittarius, which probably tells you way more than you need to know. Yes, it tells us that you participate in the mass cultural delusion that the sun's apparent position relative to arbitrarily defined constellations at the time of your birth somehow affects your personality. Albert Goodwill Spaulding, the sporting goods king, could look back on a long career in baseball. First, as a superb pitcher, then as a ruthless club owner, finally as the man who had made the game big business. But he still had one more service to perform. He was determined to prove that baseball was an exclusively American invention, the brainchild of some ingenious American lad. He appointed a commission to prove it, but two years of research turned up almost nothing. Then, in 1905, a letter arrived from a frail old man who claimed that General Abner Doubleday had invented baseball as a boy in Cooperstown, New York, one afternoon in 1839. It wasn't true. But it was just what Spalding had been looking. It proved, he said, that baseball truly was the national game. Played by Americans, watched by Americans, now invented by an American. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. Resetting the... When these pitching changes come in, we have to reset the screen. So those are not... Familiar with it, we don't want it to shake up and down on you. Righty righty matchup, the first pitch on the way to Arcia from Dubin, who's in the right hander, Sean Dubin. It's only thrown one inning so far. 
The 1 0. Pitch on the way. Swing, and that ball's lifted high and deep into center field. It'll stay in the park, but drifting back, making the catch. That'll send a runner home, and your Atlanta Braves lead it two to nothing. Good at bat by Garcia. Center fielder Myers, not really sure what he was doing with that, but I think he had time to kind of get his momentum behind him. Instead, Ozuna moves from first to second on a really good base running play. We've got runners on second and third, one out. The first pitch on the way to Kelnick is a swing and a miss, four seam fastball. It's 0 and 1. So now you got runners. Not only do you have runners on second and third, you no longer have the force play. And the infield is now drawn in because of it. So big play by Ozuna. The 0 1, swing and a miss. Kelnick chased that off the plate. 0 and 2. Kelnick's got to find a way to get that runner from third home. The 0 2 pitch. Dubin brings it, swing and a miss, strike three, and Kelnick had no chance in that at bat. He was outmatched two away. Chase that that changeup well off the plate. So that'll bring Luis Guillorme to the plate. Guillorme, righty-lefty matchup. First pitch to Guillaume is swung on and grounded weakly over to second. And that'll be an easy out to end the inning. Braves put one on and take a 2 nothing lead, but should have had a heck of a lot more. We'll be back in a flash. Back to Braves Country Baseball, the Atlanta Braves. Lead this one, two to nothing. Tyler Matzik will come in. We we're talking about that earlier. We kind of expected to see him tonight. He'll face Pena, the number six hitter, and then do up would be Singleton, who probably get pinch hit for. 
I would say Abreu possibly, and then McCormick. First pitch on the way to Pena. Swung on. That ball's blasted deep into center field. Going back on the track at the 399 sign just underneath it to the right. Money Mike makes the catch. Michael the Hawk Harris had a long way to go, but enough time to get there one away. That was a blast. Singleton will stay in the game. Lefty lefty matchup. First pitch on the way. Four seam fastball down and away for a ball. It's one and zero. Oh. A little surprised by that, but they may be waiting to hold on to Abreu for the ninth inning. The one zero. Oh. Down and out of the zone, 2-0. and oh. Yeah, Ronaldo Lopez, that'll close the book on him. Real quick, we'll go over his numbers. Very Another very impressive outing. Six innings, seven strikeouts, one walk. The 2-0 pitch swung on, pops it up high. It'll bend out of play just past the first base dugout. About four or five rows back. Gary, that it was scary. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That ball was given a ride. It's out in a lot of a lot of parks in left center. 399 doesn't hold it. They have such unique dimensions here in Houston. The 2-1, high and inside, 3-1. and one. So a 3-1 count. Pitch on the way. There we go. We're having some technical issues. We're, we finally got it back. Get the screen back. 3-1 so count. Nobody on. One down. Lefty-lefty matchup. Fastball. Caught looking. Strike three. Blew it right by him. Time for some pine, Singleton, to away. We apologize for the technical difficulties. There was a problem with the application. Couldn't get the thing to load. But we're back at it. There's two down. Once again, everyone in the division has won, except for Washington. They're just getting underway. So Braves would need to win to keep pace. The first pitch on the way to McCormick is swinging a miss strike. 95 miles an hour. Matzik is bringing it. It's 0 and 1. Braves came into tonight 10 and 5 on the year, but more importantly, two in front of Philly, two and a half in front of New York, and three and a half in front of Washington, eight in front of Miami. The 0 1 misses outside 1 and 1. So a 1 1 count. Joe Jimenez is warming up in the bullpen. The pitch swing, and that ball's. Lifted down the left field line, right field line, well out of play, one and two. Thought it may be Jimenez. We hadn't seen him in a while. There was talk earlier in the week that they were trying to limit some of these guys' innings, so I wasn't sure if it was Jimenez, but it kind of made sense it would have to be. The one, two, swung on, chopped foul down the left field line. We'll do it again. All these injuries that the Braves have had already so far, I'd say the most important thing to keep healthy would, would be that bullpen because you can absorb a lot of things with a strong bullpen. They're deep bullpen, and we've got guys down in the minors. Remember, Ken Giles had a phenomenal spring as the one-two. Way high outside, two and two. He had a phenomenal spring. He's down up there on the farm getting regular work for the Braves, and he'll be ready to roll it at a moment's notice. The 2-2 pitch, swung on, lifted foul down the line. We'll do it again. Wasker e. Noah, if you missed the, the news, Wasker e. Noah pitched last, was it last night or the night before? He got banged around a little bit, but all in all, 
he's looked pretty good on the farm. The guy that's looked the best down at AAA is the 2-2. Down and in, skips away, almost gets McCormick in the leg. Believe it or not, all those arms we have down on the farm, and all that we're talking about the Elders and the Smith Shawvers and Waldrip and just talked about he know the guy that's looked the best as far as numbers is Dylan Dodd. The three two pitch. Swing and fouls it straight back. So don't be surprised if we see his number called in the near future. I think they'd still like to leave him down there for to develop a little more before they come and bring him up again. But every time he goes out, I I check his numbers. I try I I caught one of his games. But I'm just impressed by is the 3-2 pitch. Caught looking strike three. That slider absolutely froze him. And we'll head to the eighth with a two-run lead. Tromp in the top of the order coming to the plate. Can you keep a secret? Of course I can. I lost all our money today betting on sports. Damn. I know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Can I tell you a secret? Sure, yeah. I lied. I can't keep secrets. Wait, what? Oh. So apparently me putting an alka seltzer in my mouth and walking into Walmart saying, the virus is mutated, is not funny. <laughs> Braves Country Radio, covering America's pastime from spring training all the way to the fall classic. Myers bringing it, and the pitch is hit in the air. Foul, off first, Benzinger backing and calling. And the 1990 World Championship belongs to the Cincinnati Reds. Foul, well, field, way back, Blue Jays win it. The Blue Jays are World Series champions as Joe Carter hits a three-run home run in the ninth inning. Touch them all, Joe. You'll never hit a bigger home run in your life. I think one of the worst feelings is when you're at work. I'm chair. Well, let's have a look at the replay. William, move your head. Look at the size of that boy's head. Shh. I'm not kidding. It's like an orange on a toothpick. Shh. You're going to give the boy a complex. Well, that's a huge noggin. It's a virtual planetoid. Shh. Has its own weather system. Shh. Heed, move. Move that melon of yours and get the paper if you can. He'll be crying himself to sleep tonight on his huge pillow. <laughs> ben Johnson never missed an opportunity to make a speech. It was always the same speech. All about how he single-handed and alone had made baseball a gentleman's sport and it must be kept forever clean because sportsmanship spoke from the heart of america and he would lay down his life to save our beloved nation at which he would begin to cry Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. Your Atlanta Braves lead it two to nothing. We'd like to get some insurance runs. By the way, rightfully so, when Hunter Brown left the game, he got a bit of a is is a quiet, but a bit of a standing ovation by the Astro fans that know that they need him to for for the Astros to go deep into this season. He pitched a, a good game himself. The first pitch on the way from Dubin. Who's back out there for the eighth inning? Misses high to Trump. It's one and zero. Dubin kicks and fires down and away. Did not did he go around? He did not two and zero. All three guys standing at the plate: the umpire, the catcher, and the batter all pointed down because Chadwick Trump believed that he did not go around. I kind of like that. So a 2-0 count. Swing and fouls it back out of play. 95 miles an hour, 2-1. and one. If the Houston Astros are as aggressive as they were last night using their bullpen, you got to figure Dubin may be done after facing as the 2-1 pitch is swung on, lifted high into center field, just past the diving glove of Myers, the center fielder. It's going to go up against the wall, and Chadwick Trout, a leadoff double to get us going here in the eighth inning. What I was going to say is Dubin... With, with 
Michael standing in the hole, but getting that leadoff double like that, that might change a lot of their strategy. It's about that time to turn back time. We'll do we'll squeeze these in as we go along. First pitch on the way to Acuna, swing and a miss. Pulled the string on that changeup. It's 0-1. On this date, 1928, Boston Braves pitcher Charlie Robinson has his glove removed from the game by umpire Charlie Moran. The 1-1 pitch, swing and a miss, 95, blew it right by him, 0-2. Umpire Charlie Moran re removed Charlie Robinson's glove after the Brooklyn Robins, now known as the Dodgers, complained the ball was acting strangely. The Boston Hurler still managed to win the game 3-2. Nothing was found. The 0-2 pitch. Caught, look, and strike three, 95 miles an hour, top shelf. Acuna knew it, one away. On this date in 1895 in Major League Baseball, the name Detroit Creams, inspired by owner George Vanderbeck, who boasted the Western League team would be the cream of the crop of the Western League, lasts only a season. I can't imagine that being a very popular name. First pitch on the way to Harris is outside wide for a ball. It's 1-0. The club becomes known as the Tigers the following season after the Detroit Free Press. Editor Philip Reed headlines a story. Is the 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss up top. Cutter. Bended just over the bat. 1-1. One one. Detroit Free Press editor Philip Reed headlined a story the year of the creams saying Strouders, Strouders Tigers showed up very nicely. And that's how they got the Detroit Tiger name. The 1-1. One, one. Chase one in the dirt, one and two. So a one-two count. Chadwick Trump got this inning off to a bang. And now Michael Harris trying to find a way to get him home. Runner on second, one out, the one-two pitch. Swung on, grounded over towards second. Altuve's got it, flips it over to first. 4-3 put out. Trump does make it down to third, but there are two away. And one last time, turn back time for today. On this date, 1935, with the band playing Jingle Bells at Boston Braves Field on a snowy day with near freezing temperatures, Babe Ruth makes his National League debut for the Boston Braves by hitting a home run and singling off a Giants legend, Carl Hubble. First pitch on the way to Austin Riley. Sign out of the zone for a ball. It's 1-0. The Braves beat New York 4-2, to but the team will only win 37 more games that season, and Babe Ruth will be dismissed. The 1-0 pitch misses high, 2-0. and So a 2-0 count. Runner on third, two outs. Righty, righty matchup. The pitch. Right down the pipe over the knees, two and one. Braves two, Stroh's nothing. Infield is back. Seeing eye single, broken bat, anything would score the run. The 2-1 swing and fouls it back. 2-2. Two two. The Astros are definitely, this entire series, going in on the hands on Riley, getting him to pop him up. That one, thankfully, got out of play, but they've gotten him out a few times this series already. You can tell that's the strategy. The 2-2 two -two pitch. They set up inside again. Swing, and that ball's lifted high but not very deep drifting back, making the catch is the shortstop Pena shallow left. That'll end the inning. Chadwick gets on second. We can't get him home. We'll be back in a flash heading to the bottom of the eighth. I don't know who needs to hear this today, but whatever you're going through is going to get better. It's probably going to get worse before it gets better, but it will eventually get better or it won't. You know, you may be...
the whole Met team waving their outfielders in. Here's Rick Camp with a game on the line. Two outs and no one on base. Well, they could go to another pitcher, but in 18 innings, they've used just about everybody. No, the only three guys left are Bedrosian, Perez, and Zane Smith. There's a strike going to. So they've researched that. And they figure that Camp is the best hitter of the right. three left. It'll be an 0-2 pitch. And he is at the deep left. He goes back. It is gone. Holy cow. Oh, my goodness. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Rick Kim. Rick Kim. I don't believe it. That certifies this game as the whack wild. Most improbable game in history. Nobody can believe it. Kim makes it 11-11. His first major league homer. I mean, unbelievable. There was a time, according to Jim LaFever, when he was playing with the Dodgers, and they had the great pitching staff, particularly Koufax and Drysdale. And they were sitting around early in the season going down the whole National League. And they were trying to figure out how to pitch to these guys. And they'd say, Banks will pitch to Banks this way, and Mays pitch to him that way, and uh, Eddie Matthews low and away. They finally came to, someone said, uh, Henry Aaron, dead silence in the Dodgers clubhouse. And finally, a voice piped up and said, make sure there's no one on when he hits it out. Spin a perfect eighth, and then we'll bring in eyeglasses for a perfect ninth, and get out of here with a single with a series win. First pitch on the way is swung on, swatted over to Riley, backhanded, fires it over to first. A five-three diving catch by Olson had to lean out, make the catch. One away. Olson's got a smile like Olson. Why are you trying to make it so hard on me, man? <laughs> he had to lay out spread eagle with his backhand and somehow kept his toe on the bag. And he had plenty of time. Riley, I, I think Riley thought he had to get rid of it a lot quicker. That'll bring Altuve to the plate. It was the center fielder Myers running down the line, but he hit it so hard. Riley had plenty of time, but Altuve bangs it. The first one foul 0 and 1, the 0 1 pitch just grabs the inner edge slider 0 and 2. So an 0 2 count really hope to see the Braves get a, a run or two more in the ninth. Give us some breathing room, a two nothing your lead bottom of the eighth, the 0 2 pitch. Nasty slider. Good job by Altuve to hold up. One and two. The one, two. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Chase that slider off the edge again. Two away. That's the second time he's chased the slider. The first one is against Lopez. Both of them were nasty Biting action going away from the right-handed Altuve. Just whipping away from him. First pitch on the way to Alvarez. Inside cut for a strike. It's 0-1. It's a lot nicer to have a two-run lead with Jordan Alvarez to the plate as opposed to a one-run lead. This guy can change it in a hurry. The 0-1. 95 just misses out of the zone. One and one. So a one one count. He's gone four seam, four seam. The pitch swung on, chopped over to first. Matt Olson will grab it and we'll get out of the eighth unscathed. We'll head to the top of the ninth. Olson, Ozuna, Arcia coming to the dish. Three o'clock in the morning. 
I've been playing poker with some blokes. Playing poker with some blokes? You can pack your bags and go. So can you, sweetheart. This ain't nothing house anymore. But there's a tier level of, like, college and adult life and i'm not going back to the college level tier you, you can't go this isn't walking back into my fridge not ever happening again well no but ice at that. but if i'm somewhere okay bush light i can deal with natty light no natty light i don't even feel like it's i don't know natty ice definitely not that's just a headache in a can but when i say cheap beer like stuff that that's not you know the upper echelon i'm talking about your domestics I can live on a domestic. I don't have to have the hippest, you know, fifteen dollars for a six pack beer. I'm fine. With oh, definitely. I mean, heck, let's face it. After the first two, they all taste the same after that. Well, yeah. And if you're gonna drink all day, I'm not trying to mess around with the double IPAs and porters and stuff like that. Dude, you're about to go. You're about to go to a dark place. <laughs> I'm chair. I just got out of Target, and this guy said, "Hey, you know those aren't." That's not Nirvana on your shirt. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I know Nirvana, man. Umbop's one of my favorite songs, okay? The Red Stockings finished their first season with a record of 65 wins and not a single loss. They also managed to turn a profit for their investors, $1.39. The city that had once prided itself on the stockyards had become the baseball capital of the country. And the Red Stockings spread the gospel from New York to San Francisco, traveling on the just-completed transcontinental railroad. Braves Country Radio. Please like and subscribe today. YouTube.com forward slash at Braves Country. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. We're on the out of town scoreboard. Orioles smoke the Twins 11 to 3. Metropolitans 3 to 1 over Pittsburgh. A's and Cardinals tied up at one apiece, heading to the fourth. LA 1 0 over the Nats. Heading to the second. Philly beats Colorado, 5 0. Rays walk it off against the Angels and Extras. First pitch on the way to Dubin, to Matt Olson. He's inside for a ball. It's 1 0. The 1 0. David Fletcher has arrived in the dugout, by the way. Down below the knees. Called for a strike, 2-0. Marlins, 6. San Fran, 3. That's a final. Blue Jays hold on to beat the Yankees, 5-4. The 1-1. High and out of the zone, 2-1. Guardians and Red Sox. Tied at 7 in the 11th. San Diego, 6-2 over Milwaukee. Heading to the bottom of the ninth. The 2 1 pitch. Missed outside, but they gave him the strike. Olsen didn't like it. Can't blame him. It's 2 and 2. Arizona 4 1 over Chicago in the third, or heading to the fourth. Nothing, nothing. You're scoring Seattle with the Reds in the third. The 2 2 swung on. Chopper back to the mound. Dubin's got it. Flips it to first. One away. And earlier today, Detroit beat Texas 4-2. to two, And Kansas City and the White Sox, once again, Chicago White Sox are rained out. And that's your scoreboard update. That'll bring Marcel Ozuna to the plate. Ozuna, 0-2, trying to extend his, his hitting streak. Takes a swing at the first pitch, a sweeper. Swing and a missed strike, it's on one. The 0 1. Righty, righty. Pitch on the way. Swing, and that ball is going to get laced into left field. And there you go. Marcelo Zuna extends his hitting streak. Take him all the way to the ninth inning, but he has a 15 game hitting streak. Went out there and got that one and looped it over. Lando Arcia, who's already gone deep once tonight, coming to the plate. 
First pitch on the way. Tarcia swung on. That ball is lifted into left center field. That's going to get down for a base hit. We've got runners on first and second. One out. J.K. Kidd, Jared Kelly coming to the clip, coming to the plane. So they're going to have a quick powwow at the dish. Dubin talking to Diaz. Once again, they have had a plethora of games where they've worn out their bullpen. And I think they were really trying to reset it today. So they'd like for Dubin to finish this one off if he can. Jerry Kelnick coming up. Righty lefty matchup. Kelnick's one for three. The pitch on the way. Swing and a miss over the top. Throwing one. Kelnick just chasing that changeup. He might start seeing that pitch quite a bit from the right handers. The 0 1. Down and in. That time he laid off one and one. So a 1 1 count. Runners on first and second, one down. Kelnick singled in the th in the fifth. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss over the top. Change up once again. One and two. The one two pitch. Kicks and fires down below the knees, 95 miles an hour. They're trying to set up inside. They were going to try to paint the corner on the inner cut, but instead missed good backhanded stab by Diaz because he was set up way inside. That ball was on the outer edge. Kelnick with a 918 OPS pitch. Swing and that ball's chopped foul down the first baseline. We'll do it again. Deuces wild here in the top of the ninth. Two on, a two two count, and the Braves lead it two to nothing. Guillaume is due up on deck. The pitch. Swing and that ball's lifted deep down the left field line, but foul. If you're wondering about Fletcher, I doubt you see him into tonight's game unless it's an emergency. Because he walked into that dugout and had that look like. <laughs> I don't even know if he's got cleats on. He, he could be coming in with dress shoes just running to the dugout. The 2-2. Two -two. Swing and that ball's roasted into right field. That's going to get down for a base hit. And here, they're going to hold Ozuna. Ozuna was being held before he ever got to the bag. So if you're looking at the replay and you see him kind of slowly getting to the bag, he was being held from the jump. So he, he, he wasn't cutting the bag and, and running at full speed. The first pitch on the way to Guillaume is high and out of the zone. It's 1-0. and And not saying one's better than the other because I know many times we were frustrated when Ron Washington would run you out of innings. But you're just getting used to it. The different philosophy from Tui. The 1 0. High and out of the zone, 2 0. So a 2 0 count. Braves lead it 2 0. And Ducks all over the pond. <coughs> Righty lefty matchup to Guillaume. The pitch. Swing and fouls it straight back. Slapped it up behind the screen. We'll do it again.
The 2-1. Dubin fires. Swung on and fisted towards left field. Will that get down? It's going to get down, hit the chalk, and your Atlanta Braves are going to score two more as it is going to be a ground rule double. Like that old piece of pie, that's Giorme. How about that? It, I think it actually touched the chalk. Yes, it touched the chalk on the left side of the foul line down the left field line. Looking at the replay, it definitely hit it. Braves lead it four to nothing. Looks like Houston's going to get yet another challenge. If you're wondering how that goes down, so they got the challenge. There's just not enough to change to turn that around, I don't think. There's one view on the Houston monitors, if you look at there, it looks like it could possibly be foul. But if you look at it on the monitor that the Braves are showing, it looks like it hit the left side of the chalk. And I just don't know how, unless you've got another angle that can zoom in, and I don't believe they do. And when the ball hits the ground, you can see it making an indention in the chalk move. But if you're listening on radio, it's probably the eye of the beholder. I just don't know how you could overturn that. But we've seen New York overturn a lot of things before against Atlanta, so we'll have to wait to see. But earlier, if you remember, they challenged the Acuna stolen base, they were right, so they get that back. The challenge on the home run, that actually came from the umpires because those automatically get challenged if there's a question. I don't know. If you look at it, depends on the angle you look at. If you look at from the, what is that, second base view, it looks like it could be foul. But if you look at from the left field view, it looks like the call will stand. So we'll go ahead and celebrate again. I just didn't. the result, by the way, they said the call stands. When they say the call stands, it means that there wasn't enough to overturn. That's their lingo. Looks like they're going to get a pitching change, and we'll head to break when we come back. The Braves lead it four to nothing. Runners on Play second ball. and third, and just one out. We will be back in a flash, Braves country. Join the country club today. The first month is free. You'll have access to badges, one of a kind emojis to display your Braves pride throughout the ball game. You also get instant access to our video drops, members only chat, wallpapers, and more is on the way. Help support Braves Country Radio. Join the country club today.
pushing buttons. Welcome to the Country Club. Appreciate you joining. And the Braves lead this one four to nothing. Runners on second and third. And that's going to bring Forrest Whitley. Oh, that's a blast from the past. Forrest Whitley, right-hander, comes in. First pitch on the way is a 98-mile-an-hour fastball. Down and away, it's 1-0. Forrest Whitley. How old is he now? 26 years old. The 1 0 pitch. Hi, now there's a 97 mile an hour fastball. He is bringing it 2 0. So a 2 0 count. Righty, righty. Pitch on the way, swing, and that ball's going to get down where the green grass grows. Here comes two runs will score. That's going to get into the gap. And your Atlanta Braves have put a six spot on the board. Chadwick Trump, have yourself a night, my man. 107 miles an hour off the bat. And your Atlanta Braves. Lead it 6-0. Six nothing your score. First pitch on the way to Ronald Acuna Jr. swung on and fouled back out of play. It's 0 and 1. You know Acuna with a six nothing lead and has not hit a home run out. You know he is swinging for the downs right now. The 0 1. Inside 1 and 1. So a 1 1 count. Forrest Whitley was drafted by the Astros in 2016, the 17th overall pick. He had originally committed to play baseball at Florida State when he was drafted in the first round. He decided to go pro. The 1 1 pitch swung on. Oh, that ball's blasted down the. Left field line, but foul. My goodness. That is the second one that Acuna has hit in this series out down the left field line, but missing the foul pole by about 10 to 15 feet. And I believe what has slowed him down, I believe he had a, a nasty injury. I've not thought of that kid in a while. I was covering that draft back in the one, two pitch inside hits him. Gets Acuna right on the wall at, man, he, he, he's going to be in the ice tub tonight with the ball hitting him in the knee in the outfield if y'all are just joining us. And now that one hits just in the wall at, thankfully, I, I was afraid it might have got him in the hip, but I believe got him flush in the wallet. So he'll head on down to first. I mean, a 6 nothing lead, he's banged up. Do you put Forrest Wall in at this point? The pitch on the way to Michael Harris is swung on, smoked into right field. A great grab, spinning around and throwing back into the infield is Kyle Tucker to away. He did have, yep, yeah, okay, he did have Tommy John surge. I, I, I thought I had seen that. Back in 2021, Whitley had, Tommy John surgery and this is his first this is a major league debut first pitch on the ways down and away to Austin Riley misses for a ball it's one and oh they checked down the first baseline but he held up the one oh righty righty pitch down and away two and oh Long before I was doing these games, we started back in 2021, 
I used to write for a couple of online magazines, baseball magazines, and, and I was covering that draft with Forrest Whitley. I had not thought about him in years, and he just pops out of the bullpen, the 2-0 pitch, down and away, 3-0. and So a 3-0 count, at one point he was ranked number one pitching prospect in Major League Baseball, but that's been many moons ago. So a 3-0 count, the pitch. Fastball right there at the knees, 3-1. and one. Yeah, who is that talking about the Trey, talking about the, all the Tommy Johns, and of course, I don't even know what they're calling the new one, but the one that Spencer Strider is getting, the UCL brace is what a lot of them are referring to. It's essentially Tommy John, but you, you put a brace in their arm, the 3-1 pitch. Down below the knees, ball four, and Austin Riley will head on down to first. Base is loaded now for the ice house. Two out, nowhere to put Matt Olson. It's a heck of a major league debut. Whitley, he's got to face the top of it. Best lineup in baseball. So Matt Olson stands in, righty lefty, the first pitch. Fastball below the knees, 99 miles an hour. 1 and 0. But you see now why Anthopolis doesn't want to give these big long contracts to pitchers. The 1 0 pitch, right there for a strike cutter, 92 on the edge, 1 and 1. Strider's the only one that he's given the long term contract to, and we see how that turned out. But I, I think his basic philosophy is to spend the money on the bats and figure out the pitching on shorter term deals. The one one swing and a miss, one and two. And unfortunately for Max Freed, I think he's hitting his free agency at the time where most major league clubs are are, are going that route. You notice Blake Snell, who won the Cy Young last year, he didn't get a long deal. He got a two-year deal with an opt-out. Jordan Montgomery, who was highly coveted, but he only got a two-year deal with an opt-out. The 1-2 to Olsen. Base is juiced. In the dirt. Good back, backhanded stab by Diaz. Man, that two or three times he's done that tonight where that ball should have went to the backstop. So, a 2-2 two -two count. Bases loaded, ducks all over the pond. Nowhere to put Olsen. The 2-2. Two -two. He brings it. Swing and pops it up. High in the sky. Just got underneath it. Coming in, charging in, making the catch is Jake Myers. But not for your Atlanta Braves. Put four on the board. It's 6 nothing. Hot Atlanta will head to the bottom of the ninth inning to try to slam the door. Ah, congratulations. Ah, you got on my nerves again today. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so here are three things that I think only America does. Now, the Red Corps are definitely an American thing. I've never, ever seen them in the UK. I don't think they exist. When you're in America, they're in every bar, every bar, every home, every house party, they'll have Red Cups. Number two, wearing footwear indoors. Now, I've been to a few American homes and they're completely fine with you wearing shoes inside. I don't know if this is just something in the UK we do, but we always take our shoes off before we enter the building. It surprises me every time. I mean, I still take my shoes off. It's just a habit. The last thing that I think only America does has to be taking your bank card from you. When you're paying for a meal, they will take your card away, run off somewhere in the back, put the price in, and then return with your card and a receipt. And you just kind of have to pray that they haven't added on an extra $100. We are taught back in England to never give your card to anyone. So this is something I think only America does. Heard of a cheese dog. 
The greatest home run hitter of all time, Hank Aaron, opens trading today at the New York Stock Exchange. And the market promptly hits a home run for investors. The Dow now up 23% for the year. NASDAQ, with all its tech stocks, up an astonishing 71% for the year. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. Aaron Bummer will be asked to come in and close this. They'll try to save eyeglasses for tomorrow or later in the weekend. Aaron Bummer set to face the heart of the order with a six-run lead. Kyle Tucker, Bregman, and Diaz, if anybody gets on, it's Pena. Braves defense playing back. Lefty, lefty, the first pitch on the way. Swing and fouls it straight back. It's 0 and 1. Kyle Tucker, 837 OPS with four home runs. He's from Tampa, Florida. Drafted fifth overall pick in the first round by the Astros in 2015. The 0 1. Swing and a mess. It's 0 and 2. So an 0-2 count, pitch on the way, sweeper misses down and in, 1-2. and two. The 1-2, swing, and that ball is belted deep into the seats. He is gone. 107th career home run for Kyle Tucker, and it's 6-1. Atlanta. That was a hanger. Sweeper that didn't sweep. Aaron Bummer go back to the drawing board. Nobody out. We'll bring Alex Bregman to the plate. They were aiming for outside and he hit middle end, about belt high. I mean, that was borderline is the first pitch on the way to Bregman is right there for a strike on the outer edge it's 0-1 that was borderline batting practice type of pitch the 0-1 flips the sweeper inside the zone for a strike it's 0-2 so an 0-2 count Bregman from New Mexico, Albuquerque. The 0-2 pitch. Smack down the line. Foul will do it again. wonder how many times he gets breaking bad jokes. Played his college ball at LSU. He was drafted in the first round. Second overall pick in 2015. The 0-2. Outside, 1-2. That was a part of the big rebuild for the Astros where they were tanking. The one, two pitch chop foul down the line. We'll do it again. Really the first major league baseball to, to trust the process as they say. And they tanked for a few years and got a bunch of really high draft picks and turned it into winning baseball over the last several years. The one, two pitch. Sweeper down and away. Did not go around two and two. Bregman now 30 years old. It's hard to believe he's 30 because I remember when he was drafted. That was that was uh that year, I think it was Sports Illustrated put on their covers, the two two pitch. Swung on, lifted high and deep in the center field, drifting back on the track, making the catch just before the four oh nine mark is Money Mike one away. They did it in a joking manner. I believe it was 2015. It may have, yeah, it was, it was 2015. They, 
I'm showing I'm I'm losing internet connection. So if I lose you, that's what's going on. First pitch on the way is a sweeper down and in. It's 0-1. Um, but I believe it was Sports Illustrated put it on their cover is the 0-1 pitch. Swing, and that ball's hit hard on the ground. At second, Giorme had to have it bounce off his chest, got the rebound, flips it over to Olsen. Two down. I think it might have just been my monitor. I thought I was losing internet across the board, but it looks like we're okay. Um, but they put on on their preview for the, for the Major League Baseball preview, it was Cubs versus Astros World Series, and then in small letters it said, not so fast, and then basically said, this is what we're predicting is going to happen down the road, but um, this year it won't be them because both teams were, were expected to be bad. The 1-0 pitch inside almost gets Pena on the leg. 2-0. But the Cubs did win the World Series the following year, and the Astros, even though it's marred with the cheating scandal, uh, they won it in 2017. So they, they, they were off by the two of them matching up with each other. The two of them did world win World Series back to back years after that. The 2 0, right there at the knees, 2 and 1. So a 2 1 count. Astros down to their last out. Remember, Braves Country Tonight comes your way right after the game. The 2 1, swing and chops it foul down the line. We'll do it again. I don't have to be up at the crack of dawn so or actually before <laughs> before i said crack of dawn it's dark out when i get it when i got up last two mornings the two two lefty righty the pitch swing and laced into left center field it'll almost get to the wall money mike michael the hawk harris man he covered some ground on that one Braves lead at six to one, and he cut the ball off, keeping Pena from getting a triple. His second double of the night. Great hustle by Harris. And along that line, Kelnick was out there hustling too. How many times did we see our left fielder not hustle last year? It's a, it's a refreshing thing to see it. So that'll bring the number seven hitter Dubon to the plate. Dubon takes the first pitch inside or high for a ball. It's one and oh. He is pinch hitting for Singleton. McCormick would be next and then Myers. Iglesias is standing up, but I don't think he's quite started getting loose. They hope not to use him. The one oh pitch is gonna get dropped into right field. A sawed-off shot that's going to score the runner. And it's six to two now, and they're going to go out there and talk to Bummer now. Runner on first, two outs, a four-run lead. That what that means now is that now Iglesias has to go get warm, and that's what you hate about this is he was supposed to be brought in to shut the door. Instead, I think this was the biggest question mark of the bullpen in the offseason when they made the trade for Bummer. His his numbers were terrible. But all the geek stats, as they call them, you know, the, the bad bip and the expected batting average, all that stuff pointed to him being much better. But sometimes you just are what you are. First pitch to from Bummer to McCormick is down and in for a ball. It's 1-0. I think he'd be the first candidate to hit the trail and bring Ken Giles up. The 1 0 pitch swung on and rifled foul down the line. One and one. A lot of the things that they looked at with him is that he's supposed to be a ground ball pitcher, he's supposed to be a ground ball specialist. And we've seen tonight, I mean, ball after ball getting hit 
deep into the outfield. The 1-1 one, one sweeper misses inside 2-1. and one. So the 2-1 count to McCormick on the play. The runner at first is just going to take second on catcher's indifference, and Iglesias is warming up. The 2-1, down and in, ball 3-3-1. Three, three and one. Iglesias looks like he's pretty close to being warm. This will be Bummer's last batter come hell or high water. Because if you bring, let's say he walks this guy, the rule for a save is the tying run has to be on deck. The 3-1 pitch, down and away, ball four. And so now the tying run is on deck. And to make it worse, the tying run on deck is Altuve. We'll be back in a flash. Snickers going to go get Bummer, send him to the showers, maybe kick him in the fanny a little bit, and we'll go get eyeglasses try to get that last out. Hey, Dad, what's one piece of advice you'd give to somebody? Don't have kids. All right, then. Wait, what would you say? I know you're watching football all day, so I'm going to go get you some more beer and make some wings for lunch. And I was also thinking that we could hang that TV outside so you could have two games at once. Why are you crying? It's just the first time that you've said that you've loved me in a while. Where are you from? What? Where are you from? What are you talking about? Where are you from? You know where I'm from. The folks want to know. Oh, you're doing a question? Yeah. <laughs> Come talk to these folks. All right, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll tell them. We are from West Georgia, near the Alabama line. We're a little bit classy and a little bit trashy. I probably have some family members that have dual roles. Do you know what that means? A cousin, maybe an uncle. Yep. I just had one locked up because they were mixing up chemicals in their in their um, motor home. Look how she's looking at me. Don't, don't be hating on your family. Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow is Friday. And to most blue-collar workers, that means nothing at all because we got to go to work on Saturday. We lost because my guys, my colleagues, didn't stand up with me. And I can't make any excuse for them. Had we shown any amount of solidarity, if the superstars had stood up and said, we're with Kurt Flood, if the superstars had walked into the courtroom in New York and made their presence known, I think that the owners would have gotten the message very clearly, given me a chance to win that. Kurt Flood never played Major League Baseball again. Well, we are back at it. Rosiel Iglesias will come in. Iglesias trying to get the last out. It's Caratini, the number nine hitter, will come on to pinch it. First pitch on the way from Iglesias, swing and a miss strike, change up over the top. It's 0 and 1. The 0 1. Righty, lefty, down and in, one and one. So a 1-1 one, one count. Braves country tonight coming your way right after the game. Braves lead at 6-2, to two, bottom of the ninth. Two on, two out. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Glacius fires. 95 misses inside. Two and one. So a 2-1 count. Fortunately, I think we're stuck with Bummer for a while. I don't think they're going to do anything about it. The 2-1 swing chops it off. Foul off the plate, 2-2. Two and two. I don't think you're going to see him in high leverage situations for a while, not until he gets straight. They believe in him. They made the trade for him. Remember, that was a part of the trade that brought the, sent Soroka to Chicago, by the way, if you haven't paid attention to that, he's been getting pounded. The 2-2 pitch. Swung on, grounded up the middle. RC has got it, and that'll end the game. 
Braves win. Braves win. Your Atlanta Braves win. Whiskey for my men. Beer for my horses. Braves six. Astros two. Acuna must be okay. He's out there doing the gritty with Harris and Kelnick. And and uh, <laughs> I think Kelnick was out there trying to dance with them. And they got a big laugh at it. I, I didn't get a chance to see what he was attempting to do. But uh, <laughs> he definitely got a big laugh out of Acuna. So Acuna must be okay. He's dancing. Dancing in the streets. Braves win at 6-2. to two. We'll be back in a flash. Braves Country Night to wrap this up and give out the game balls. Braves country. Welcome in Braves country, Braves country tonight. If you want to call in, we're going to put the phone number up on the screen, open phone lines. Remember we are on radio family show, so please keep it clean. The number to call is 678-960-9700. That's 678-960-9700. Braves win a big one, six to two. Look, I know the, the Astros are not playing great baseball, but we know who the Astros are. And they'll probably be in there the, in, the, in the end of the American League. And to take two of the first three in this series is a big step. And we've got a chance for a sweep. We've got Max Freed on the mound tomorrow night, or tomorrow afternoon, excuse me, 210 first pitch with uh, up against J.P. France. So that really is a big, big win because Atlanta – get down to our score have to scroll down here there we go they got us all the way at the bottom what the hell are they doing uh <laughs> braves win it six to two i'm gonna go into the into the box score real quick and uh get this get this up the Atlanta braves lopez gets the win obviously another brilliant outing by lopez i mean what can you say about this kid this kid is just unbelievable every step of the way iglesias gets gets the win i mean gets the save excuse me and let me uh zoom this out just a little bit so you can see it a little better there you go uh lopez goes to two and oh iglesias gets his fourth save and all in all the bullpen's been great but man aaron bummer's a problem and i know they believe in him and I know that they're not going to give up on him. You're not going to give up on a guy that you just traded for and you've got control for. I, I get all that. But he's a problem because all the all their analytics that they that they showed, 
that said that he should be doing much better, right? That he should be playing much better, that, that, that he's going to really show you what he's got. He's pitching exactly what his numbers were last year. And we'll get into that here in a second. But I get it. It's a long season. But this is our first look at him, and he's just he's been bad. What is his ERA up to now? It's got to be. Yeah, it's exactly where it was when we got when we got him. It, it was six point seven one. Right now, his ERA is six point seven five. Six point seven five. Jesse says Bummer is past his prime. I mean, he's thirty. <laughs> what did he have a prime? Um, looking at his his career. I mean, he had one good year with the White Sox in 2022. The rest of it's been meh. 23, a six, I'm sorry, 679 ERA. So he's actually dropped it by .04. 675 ERA this year. Um, And looking at his other numbers, and the thing is, and, and you wonder why they got it, they got him because of all these dopey, expected batting averages expected this expected that. what whatever happened to looking at what the hell the guy actually does and what not what you make believe fantasy world does i've never understood i understand where they get the numbers from but i never understood believing in those numbers and i've got a couple of buddies that live by them they swear up and down that this and that and the, and every year we play in a uh, uh, couple of fantasy baseball leagues every year. I smoke them because they always draft guys on what they could do. And I've said this for years about real baseball, whatever. Look at the back of the guy's baseball card, and whatever the hell he did is probably what he's going to do. Yeah, there's outliers. There, there are years where guys have career years. But typically, if you look at the back of a guy's baseball card, you're going to get what you get. It's not like it was a small sample size. Last year, he had 61 appearances, 58 in a third inning. And he had a 6.79 ERA. He, now what it looks like is that when he's been bad, he's been really bad. When he's been good, he's been pretty good. He did have 15 holds last year. But they weren't all just wild swings. He only gave up four home runs last year, but gave up 44 earned runs in what 58 innings so he's getting pounded he had a whip last year of 1.53 and that's the one that i always point to and say all right what's a what is a pitcher doing what is he how many ducks is he putting on the pond right how many hitters does he have how many hits does he give it up how many walks does he give it up and you look at it a 1.53 whip is terrible for a reliever, it is god awful. By the way, his whip this year is two point one. For folks who aren't familiar with it, you want your reliever's whip to be down below one point one zero. In a perfect world, like the very dominant ones are below one, but just above one, you're fine with, and that means basically that they're averaging one clean base runner per nine innings. That's essentially what it means. Well, he's averaging. Two per inning, per nine innings. Well, actually, over two. But anyways, the batting average against Aaron Bummer this year is 367. 367! That's Ty Cobb's batting average, his lifetime batting average. The greatest batting average of all time. That's what Aaron Bummer's given up so far. But let's go ahead and give out the game ball. Go a couple of different ways. You can almost have him share it tonight. Ronaldo Lopez, once again, six innings, seven strikeouts, one walk, was phenomenal. Was absolutely phenomenal. But I think we're going to go a different route tonight just because he had a couple of big hits. Comes up off the bench. Chadwick Tromp had some good defensive plays as well. Called a great game behind the plate. He went two for four, two RBIs, extra base hits. Raises batting average up to 235. Let's give the give the game ball to Chadwick Trump because the last time out, Ronaldo Lopez got the game ball rightfully. So I don't want to always give it to the dominant pitcher because when a guy has a good game like he had, and 
he he had a key part to helping this game get busted wide wide open. You do want the honorable mention of the home run by Arcia that got things going. Other guys that had good nights tonight, along with Arcia and Trump, Kelnick did have two hits, and we had four runs. Or excuse, four four runs in the ninth, six runs, eleven hits, no errors. Two runs, seven hits, no errors. And if we're not going to get any phone calls, we'll probably call it tonight. I know it's a late one, but we we, we do want to do the uh, the uh, Brave Country's Braves Country tonight post game show uh, whenever we can. So um, that's about it. Tomorrow it's going to be Max Freed. He's going up against JP France. We got an opportunity for a sweep. What a big sweep that would be if we could go off of this road trip after the way it started thinking we may lose the series to the Marlins. Ozuna gets us up off the deck on Sunday to win the series. And now we're four. We have a chance to go five and one on a road trip. And I don't care who you're playing or how well they're playing in major league baseball. That's saying something. And we go home to face Texas and we'll get those Marlins again early next week. Y'all have a uh, great one. Y'all uh, thanks for tuning in to Braves country today braves country baseball and then braves country tonight we will see you manana 210 first pitch braves country today will come your way just after 1 30 y'all have a good one Braves country.